this is what you will log in. Um, if you want to go in and view whatever's there as a board member, you would use these logins. I've also highlighted the actual website that you would enter your information, your username and login here to access the platform for each school. This is just a snapshot of what schools see when they enter the platform so that you can see kind of what they have to work through. This is uh, Marion Boards. You will always see the school's name when you enter the system. Your dashboard will look a little different because you have access to reports mostly. Um, however, you will have the hour direction, um, which shows the objectives or indicators focused on. Um, the number of meet meetings within the last 90 days. Um, a meeting will not be recognized if they have only uploaded agendas. They have to upload the agenda and the minute meetings, the meeting minutes, in order for it to be acknowledged as a meeting. Then you have your success cycle and then the progress um, of the school. So although we're in a virtual platform currently, schools have continued to meet with their leadership teams um, to create and develop action steps in order to focus on school improvement. But they are using the NC Star platform to do this. And they're using the assess, create, and monitor process to ensure that they're turning around their school um, and creating opportunities for student success. Uh, the schools next, next, the schools will present their school improvement plan. They will have 12 minutes to present, and then you would have opportunities to ask questions. And the order is here, Marion Board, Northside, Vaughn, Warren County Middle, Warren County High, and then Early College and New Tech. Now, restart schools have additional documents that they must upload. And within those documents, it has to address the flexibilities that they plan to implement at their schools. So those schools will actually share what their flexibilities are this year also that they're implementing throughout their um, school improvement presentation. Are there any questions about this platform? I know it was a lot in a small amount of time, um, but if you need additional um, information or trainings, I don't, I'm open to that. I'm here to support that. But are there any questions currently? Yeah, I, I appreciate you share, sharing, uh, Ms. Jennings, and I appreciate you saying that because this is a lot of information that you went over fairly quickly. And yes. so what I would ask Dr. Young and you is to try to figure out a time where we can um, go through this a little bit more thoroughly. And as board members, we can, you guys can walk us through this process because I haven't used the system, but I do recall we did have access. Mm -hmm. um, but it would be great if we could just have some time set aside where we can just do that if you could, please. Thank you. Yes. But thank you. Thank you. Hey, Ms. Jennings, this is Ms. Lehman. I have a question as well. Um, I have a handout that I think Mr. Connor gave us last year, how to log in and access. Is this everything I need to know that you just went over? So if I follow this, yes. is this um, going to get me the same place that you're saying now? This, these gas numbers and all of this is the same. Is yes, that correct? That's correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And then I have another question. Mm -hmm. I had someone text me. I put it in the chat. Listen to this meeting. Um, you were breaking up, Ms. Lehman. Could you repeat that? I had a text asking if the public has access to this meeting. So how do yes. they, how would they get on? Mr. Connor? Meeting. Access to this meeting. Okay, thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. If there are no other questions, we will dive right in with Marion Board Elementary School. If I, if I could just real quickly, I'm sorry, Chelsea. Oh, yes. um, I don't know how many board members have been able to um, sign into the um, um, the, the, the website for us to be able to vote, but I'm having some, I'm using my other laptop, kind of do it at the same time. If you guys have, that's great. If you haven't, Miss um, Lisa, we just may have to do it by hand, if that's okay. 
I don't know if it'll hinder anything or not. You can tell us. But I know she's asking us to sign in to, and she sent us an email to click on. If you guys can do that, that's great. I'm trying to get to mine now for my other laptop. So just, you know, try that if you could. I was able to sign in. I'm okay. on as well. Linda, are you on? Joyce, are you on? No, I'm not. Okay. If we can't, that's fine. But um, I'm trying to get on too. You guys, you, we can try to do it while we're listening to the presentations if you guys can. So thank you. I'll turn it back over to you, Chelsea. Okay. Um, Ms. Brewer, are you ready? I am. All right. We have Marion Boyd and we will follow the list as um, outlined. Okay. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. All right. All right, let me look at something first. Okay, here we go. All right, I just wanna make sure the sound was on. You notice they, they uh, let the oldest go first. So I'm the, uh, probably the worst with the technology, but um, I learn every day. So, um, let's see, can you see this? Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. Uh, greetings. Uh, if you want to put it in, I'm sorry, present mode. Yeah, I will. I am Thanks. just a minute. Um, I just want to say greetings to the board and to Dr. Young. Um, my fellow principals, executive cabinet, anyone that's on. All right. Okay. Uh, just thought a little Bruno Mars would liven everything up a little bit there. Um, as you can see on this screen, um, this, I thought I would start, since we are a Google school at Marion Boyd, um, and this is what our children normally do, even when we're not virtual learning, um, they have what they call a Google Classroom. And um, even though theirs might not have uh, Ms. Brewer as their emoji um, there, uh, they do have something that looks very similar to this. Um, the Blackboard, I might have their announcements for the week or the day um, where I have plan indicators. Um, all those little things might be the different, um, like math, reading, that kind of thing. Um, Ernie, how do I get rid of uh, the pictures on the side, our pictures? Never mind, I got it. Okay. Now, okay, so um, they would uh, be able to see the um, d different things that they had on the screen, like math, reading, science, all of those things would be um, up there for them. Any assignments that they have, any homework that they have, uh, any announcements that they would have, everything is on this one screen. And uh, parents tend to think that's wonderful because they can go there and uh, find out everything that um, the children need and it's all in one place. Now, when they want to click on something and go somewhere, they're gonna do just like I'm getting ready to do to go to my slide presentation. All right. Okay. Okay. So Marion Boyd's Elementary School Improvement Plan for 2020-2021. Uh, the first thing is our team, and this is our school improvement team. And as you can see, there are um, representatives from each grade level, along with our teacher of the year, our TA of the year, um, our tech coach, guidance counselor, principal, assistant principal, MTSS coach, and of course, our parent representative. All right, our mission and our vision for Marion Boyd. The mission is 
um, is the priority of our school to empower students to realize their full potential and achieve their personal best. Uh, the foundation will enable each student to become a lifelong learner who's prepared for the challenges of the 21st century. And our vision is just very simple, preparing students, inspiring achievement, and celebrating success. Our core beliefs, there are three here, and these are very important to us. Um, number one is every child can learn and has the right to learn. Number two, diversity, inclusion, and safety promote strong schools. And three, teaching and learning are a collaborative effort for students, teachers, parents, and community. And as Ms. Jennings has already explained, um, these are our plan indicators. And we do have 12 of them for the year, but we always pick the ones that we really need to focus on, and that's these four. And I won't go over them um, individually because on the next four slides, I will be doing that. So the first one um, is an academic goal, A4.01. The school implements a tiered instructional system that allows teachers to deliver evidence-based instruction aligned with the individual needs of students across all tiers. And as Ms. Jones also stated, uh, Marion Boyd is one of the four restart schools in the um, county. So we use our restart flexibilities to uh, ensure that we meet this goal. And the first um, flexibility that we use is a budget. And this is where um, we use this to purchase programs, um, to forward our, our Google School and our whole concept. Um, we've purchased Nearpod, GoFormative, Reading Counts, RAS Kids, Science Weekly, Social Studies Weekly. Um, and then we, all, we also used um, budget to pay for professional development opportunities on many of these programs that we have. Second flexibility is employment. And with that, we hired, um, we paid half of the position for an MTSS instructional coach. And we also hired an art teacher under research status to incorporate art through literacy. And that has worked very well for us. Uh, we also utilize the district programs, iReady and Study Island to increase student achievement outcomes as well. Our second indicator is on behavior. A1.07, all teachers employ effective classroom management and reinforce classroom rules and procedures by positively teaching them. Um, again, we use a restart flexibility, our budget, um, in order to purchase incentives, which are used to increase positive behavior. Um, if we were in school, uh, we, would, we always have fantastic Fridays, um, each nine weeks to reward behavior, and this is where students come and they have a pre uh, rotations of media where they watch a movie and have popcorn. They have art class where they um, actually make a project while they're in there to take home. And then of course, um, PE where they have um, an activity. Um, during virtual, we've had to uh, revamp that a little bit as you will see on the next slides, but we have uh, continued to do the incentives. Uh, we also use the employment flexibility uh, we hired an ISS slash de-escalation um, coordinator. Um, this is a teacher assistant that we have put in this. This has definitely helped our uh, suspension rate. Um, this is a place where students can go. They might need to just go for a couple of hours. They might need to go for uh, half a day or the whole day, but they can go in here and still continue to do their work and uh, talk to the ISS coordinator about their behavior, why they acted the way they did and what they're gonna do to change that. So that has been a, a definite help in our classroom management. Attendance, uh, A4.09, the leadership team monitors rates of student transfer, dropout, graduation, attendance, and post high school outcome. And we definitely focus on attendance on this one. And we use our budget um, here also to purchase incentives, um, to give rewards throughout the um, year. So during the virtual, learning what we did was we combined our behavior and our attendance awards and last friday well this is the second one we've had but last friday we had our second one and we had a drive-through and we had certificates prepared for the students and we had um goodie bags um with like you know just small toys and candy and um 
school supplies and things like that, which they, they really enjoyed and it was good to see them and, and, and good to give them their awards. And the parents were very excited about it as well. Our last one is uh, technology. And that's a huge one for us since we are a Google school. And of course this year it's been even more um, so because of the virtual learning that we've um, been doing. D2.01, all teachers use online hybrid or blended learning as a part of a larger pedagogical approach that combines the effective socialization opportunities within the classroom with the enhanced learning opportunities available through technology. And we use the restart flexibility for budget. Um, and with this budget, we have purchased a one-to-one -one technology for every single grade now, pre-K through five. Uh, we've purchased 70 inch interactive panels for every single teacher. We've purchased software and programs to enhance the academic achievement of our students. We pay for professional development opportunities such as Google training and Nearpod training. Um, and we've also created what we call a Nareva room where we have a 20 foot span uh, Nareva wall uh, that's an interactive board that teachers and students can um, use when they are in the building. Um, we've also, um, our media person also uses the Nareva board in her library uh, now to teach the children virtually. And we also um, used uh, the employment flexibility uh, where we hired a technology slash media coach under restart status. Data. Um, and of course, this is most important to uh, see where we have been and where we're going. So in 2019-20, in March, that was the last time the students took um, took any type of testing uh, in the building. This was uh, K-3 reading, which was I station. And it's only K-3 because it, uh, I station was only four of those grades. It didn't go up through fourth, fifth grade. So this was their reading. Um, and it was it's divided into levels, um, much like the EOG. So you can see that um, you can see that kindergarten had at that time about 20% uh, passing, um, first grade 40%, second grade uh, 63%, and third grade 60%. Now, um, kindergarten and first grade always looked really low um, at that time, but usually by the end of the year, uh, they come up higher than uh, third and fourth grade, uh, second and third grade, I mean. So, you know, it, it, it does look low at that time, which is like the middle of the year, but they, that last half is when they really turn it on and kindergartners and first graders really start to, um, start to bloom. All right, our next one is the fourth and fifth grade, and this is our ready data. Like I said, um, our station only goes to third grade. So this was our iReady data. And for reading, fourth grade had about a 70% passing. And this is divided into three uh, tiers instead of five. Uh, you can see that in fourth grade, they had 17%. There was on a risk of, of tier three, which were our lowest students. And when I look at the yellow, that's tier two, usually about half, maybe a little more, will end up being proficient. So that's where I get the 70%. And then fifth grade, um, was, was it will be that 60% proficient. All right, then we go to math. And all of math is iReady uh, data. So for kindergarten, um, it would end up being about 60% proficient. For first grade, about 55%. And third grade, excuse me, second grade, 55%. Third grade was about 58%. Fourth grade, 60%. And fifth grade, 58%. And remember, this was in March of last year. And this is just an overall look, an overall placement at um, our math. So you can see we had about an 8% in that bottom rung, 69% um, in the middle and 23% at the top. Okay, progress that we've made. In 2018-19, our school did move from a D to a C and we met growth that year. In 1920, 
uh, we were headed or on track to move from our C to our B and meet or exceed growth. But of course, you know, with COVID, we didn't test, so um, we didn't get uh, scores that year. And then this year for 2021, our goal is to still move our school grade to a B and meet or exceed growth. As we move toward this goal, teachers are focused on the implementation of an MTSS school improvement framework, which concentrates on database differentiated instruction and intervention. Continuous improvement. This year, we are continuing to focus on the enhancement of our blended learning model. Even as we meet virtually, we will combine collaboration in the classroom with enhanced learning through technology, which aligns with the county's strategic plan. We are using our MTSS framework to guide teachers to analyze data and provide interventions and close the achievement gap. And as I told my teachers, um, we really believe that MTSS is going to be our, um, our, our, our prescription for success. Um, we've done everything we can do in our own power, but we feel like this is the boost that we need. And this is what gives us, it takes us away from a one size fits all education and um, puts us into the individual um, needs of the student. And last, teachers continue to use the Google platform to increase students' motivation for learning, to create a more conducive learning environment and to increase student engagement. Thank you. And are there any questions? I do want to just say, uh, Ms. Bure, that um, I really like your creativity. Um, I enjoy your opening and how colorful your presentation is. It, it, it does um, remind me a lot of your personality and your team, that the atmosphere that's at your school. So I really appreciate um, that individuality that you brought to the table. Um, other board members, do you guys have any questions for the presentation before I say anything else? Um, anybody? No questions here. Okay, thanks, Sam. No, no questions here. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> Joyce or Victoria, any questions? No questions. Thank you, Ms. Long. No questions. No. I guess it's not so much a question. Is the the plan was this this plan is for this year, right? 2021. And we've spent so much of it virtually. How I know you talked to it several on several accounts, how you can align the plan with actually being in a virtual situation. Just talk to how difficult that has been or has it been really a simple transition? Just help us understand a little bit how the plan that was designed for in school is now having to work for virtual school. Well, the one good thing about our plan is the fact that we are a Google school, which already made us very much virtual. Um, so that part was very easy. Our, our teachers didn't have a big, the majority of our teachers, a couple of our new ones, did not have a big learning curve. They already knew the Google Classroom. Um, so that, that, that works very well for us. Um, and all of the goals that we had, like the technology goals and those sort of things were already pretty much set up toward a virtual stance anyway. Um, the part that has been a problem for us is, um, it's easy to get the attention of the students in your classroom. Um, it's not so easy to make sure they all join the Google Classroom every day. That's been our challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and it has improved greatly from um, last spring. And I think now the parents, do, having had two, um, I'll just be plain here, having had two uh, report cards at this point, um, the parents are now beginning to understand that grades do matter, that, that we are grading. Um, this is a real school year. It, we won't get a COVID pass. And so therefore, um, the majority of our children are online every day. Um, we still have a few that we are still working on, but um, that, that has really been our biggest challenge. Not, not so much the plan that we set, but just the logistics of, um, that really has nothing to do with the plan, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay, thank you, that's helpful. And I, I appreciate that question, Victoria, because that's one of the things 
uh, Miss Brewer, that I was going to um, say. I know you guys are a Google school, which kind of sets you apart and puts you kind of above with knowing what to do anyway because you're virtual. But you, I think I heard you say that your problem was more so the attendance than anything. Is that what I heard? Right. And so with that being said, um, what systems have you guys put in place or are putting in place to assist you with the attendance issue? Because you got to figure out some creative ways to um, encourage those students to join. And I know you also said that um, they realize that grades matter. So that may be one of the things. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely help that it has. And then, like I said, uh, when I mentioned uh, about incentives, um, we just had to really kind of change our whole thinking from, you know, doing things inside the school building. And so then, like I said, we had that drive through, we've had those twice. Um, and those have been uh, very successful. Um, the majority of our students that got awards for behavior or attendance, and we also did it for honor roll. Um, the parents have, have come through and they've gotten, you know, their prizes, their, um, their certificates, and um, also just, you know, goodie bags and things like that. Um, I think the next one we're planning to do um, an ice cream party and, you know, we'll just like, but it'll be individual ice creams, not like we've been doing with the Sundays and all. Right. And, um, you know, just trying to come up with individual things that we can do as a drive through um, has been the biggest thing. We've also just been um, trying to send them things in the mail send them certificates. And I know our teachers have been um, sending notes. And then of course, we've also had to go the route on a few with our guidance counselor and um, our social worker going out to houses. And uh, my teachers have also made visits. Uh, on many occasions, they have stood at the bottom of the step and um, after they've knocked on the door, run back down to the step and said, you know, uh, how come your child's not on? Please make sure they're on live session. Um, they do that quite frequently. So, um, you know, we just had to be creative and find ways to uh, to, to to get our students to uh, get online. Okay, sounds good. Well, again, I, I, I have one quick, last quick question. Ms. Brewer, do you glue? Do what? Do you glue? Uh, yes, and Ernie uh, tried to get me to go ahead and do that in front of you all, but um, I said not this time. If we were live, I was definitely going to do that. Okay, great. I, I was hoping you'd say that. that. Sorry, what did you ask her? Is she hula hoop? She has a she's hula hooping. I didn't hula hooping thank you. Oh, okay. You're too young to know what a hula hoop is. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, but I do know what. <laughs> that, that's what I said about the uh, emojis. Um, I I told my daughter. I said uh, emojis is like um, paper dolls, and she went, "What is that?" And I said, yeah. "Well, when I was a little girl. We used to play paper dolls." And I said, "This is just a digital paper doll. That's all." <laughs> well, again, Ms. Brewer, we just want to just say we appreciate your creativity. Thank you for all that you do. You're welcome, and thank you. All right. All right, let me stop. Okay, sharing. next we have Ms. Dunbar, Northside K-8. Thank you, Ms. Brewer. You're welcome. Let me turn my phone. Okay, thank you so much. I know I'm on mute. I'm just getting adjusted to transfer in for a Northside K-8 school. Go Bulldogs! We always represent. So we're excited about our presentation. I'd like to welcome our new school board members, um, Sims and Mrs. Long. I did not have the chance to formally um, say welcome to our county on behalf of, I know, as principals. And so we're excited about you joining the Warren County School. And I call it a family um, at this point. And you'll know what it means once you've been with us long enough. It's a family environment. But moving along to so the presentation for uh, Northside, I'm just going to change my uh, slide. And so we are still continuing with our mission and vision that has not changed. And so basically in this part, let me move this over so we can see there, is that we are continuing to provide what we call a safe, caring, stimulating learning environment. That's still the same, even in COVID-19, where students are developing not only socially, emotionally, and also achieving academic success. Our mission, and we're all pulling, as you can see that mission icon, 
is to cultivate a community where there's collaboration, we're dedicated to increasing student achievement through our positive relationships, which are key, and also having those high expectations. And the game changer is the rigorous differentiated learning. So we are still focusing on that. That has not changed during COVID-19. Now the vehicle may have, but that has not changed. So our next one, our core beliefs is that we believe that the, our, every student can learn and we are always creating what we call the synergy. When you're working with the stakeholders, you're creating that environment where we're all pulling together and collaborating and it's propelling our students and their minds to grow to their fullest potential. Our next one for our indicators. So it's C201, and I'm going to just start summarizing it. Basically, data will continue to drive the classroom um, instruction and also our professional development needs, A401. In this case, we're using the tiered instructional support. And we're going to be using MTSS, which is a multi-tiered system of support with RTI Store, which is a special software that we're using. And that's going to align to meet the needs of our students. E.106, we're still big on how do we communicate with our parents. That's, that has not changed, but now we have to do it during COVID-19. It was one way trying to get them in the building, but now we have to do a lot of that virtual and also how they can support their child at home. For our restart plan, engineering is elementary. This is where our teachers are serving as facilitators and they're providing students with those hands-on STEM challenges with a global twist. Stories are being shared from other cultures around the world. They have relatable problems in which they're required to find unique solutions. So our um, Google Classroom model, we are on that one-to-one -one student Chromebook ratio. It, it came quicker, which I'm, I appreciate COVID-19 for that. I can tell you that those computers, you know, came in, whether we had them in-house or whether we're waiting to receive new ones. Our flexible um, calendar for remote learning. And so I'm, I'm not going to read from the screen. I have my own take on things. So you've seen that already. So what I will say, we're embedding professional development. And this is where we're changing the physical classroom. We're converting it to the virtual classroom. We're using data as the platform to interface with the RTI software, which is an online software that can identify students' needs. So let's see that one. All right. Our next one, part of our restart plan, we are still having what we call our day tutors. And it's gonna look a little, a little bit different because our day tutors, we were expecting them to come in and work with them face to face. But now if we do not return in January, we're gonna look at having them work virtually. So I just wanted to say that that's gonna be um, the difference. And we're extending them. We used to have them work for third, fourth and fifth. We're gonna extend it through the eighth grade because we are realizing with the duration of COVID-19, they're gonna need more support. Our dual language program, and these are our updates. We have changed from a co-teaching model to a bilingual teacher assistant. So those are some updates. Um, we are continuing providing support for our middle school students. What we find is that the dual language immersion program began in kindergarten and stops at fifth grade. So our sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students will need support if they want to continue and retain the language that they were learning. So we are in the process of hiring a bilingual facilitator <laughs> so to work with our upper grade students. So we heard the calls and the cries from those parents that went through all those years of dual language, but yes, we are going to support them in the upper grades. Okay. Our next one, let's see one here. All right, let me go back because there's one on the bottom. All right, our blended learning. So the blended learning approach and the best way to explain this is basically it closes the gaps, not only from the teacher perspective, but actually using software. And this is just computer technology. I just keep it simple. And what the students are doing is that they're going on these computer softwares, which is iReady, uh, Study Island, and it is actually customizing individual learning plans. It meets them where they are and it moves them through their own plan, which is awesome, which we didn't have that before. And we thank the district for the initiatives and in purchasing these items district-wide, I will say, to help all students. 
our report card grade. So in this one, the last data we have is the 2018-2019, 51% school performance grade of D. Overall grades for third through eighth grade, we have the reading for 46.5, math 41.6, Science 61.3. I will say for some people, those scores are very daunting. For me, I'm excited because sometimes when you're so low, there's nothing to do but go up. And that's what I do. I move schools. So I'm excited with that data. And I told my staff that. I said, oh, we're in a good position. I mean, it's all how you look at it. We're in a great position because we probably now we're going to meet it in COVID-19, but now we're trying to exceed it. So when you have low scores and in some grades, if you took them besides the overall, there's some that even got 18% in math. So I mean that they're the gateway for moving and growth. It's all there. So in, in this instance, we're moving on to a 60% or higher, and we're going to go to our letter grade of C. So having said that, we're looking at our iReady results that are already in from September. They're in tiers, and Ms. Brewer did an excellent job talking about those tiers and giving you the graphics, and I'll just give you the raw data. So thank you, Ms. Brewer. But in this case, tier one, 34% of the students on grade level, tier two, 36% are strategic, meaning they are slightly below the grade level, and tier three, 30% of them are considered intensive uh, support that's needed with them. Okay, we'll go on to our next one. Alrighty, and for our math results, it's going to be in this 21% on grade level, 47% of the students strategic, 31% intensive support. I will say if you combine the data from the reading and the math results, you put tier one and tier two together for reading, they will be at 70% if we're able to move them and get them all into the green area. If you look at the math, they will be at 68%. That's when you look at the ones that are slightly below. And if you move them, combine them with the ones that are currently on uh, grade level. I will have to do a disclaimer and say the elephant in the room is that the test was taken at home. I just want you to know that. So we're kind of looking at the data, but then we're like, okay, it may read a little bit differently when our babies come to school. But I just want to let you know that part. That was important. All righty. Moving on, so how are we going to raise student achievement this year? So we're looking at our Jumpstart program, and that was a district initiative where all our kindergarten through fourth grade teachers are working in the program here at Northside. They have a maximum of five students that they are working intently with. In addition, we are continuing our STEM challenges, and so we are EIE, but now we have to provide the uh, STEM kits, we have to provide a venue in which we can distribute them so that they are home delivered. That's our next word. Either the parents can pick them up because we want to continue STEM, but it does require those kits for students to work on them. So we want to make sure that's done. For our curriculum, we're excited about Amy Richardson. She is our um, new curriculum coach. Amy Richardson was here at Northside before. She's also a licensed principal. She's been working with the teachers with that MTSS support and also conducting PLCs on how to move our students. The staff are still using their data notebooks from last year, but now they're incorporating all this virtual learning that's taking place now. So they're putting in the eye ready. They're looking at study only. And based on that, their next step with the software is they want to create their own customized teaching plans. They have the group, but now they want to break it down based on the data. So that's where we are in that one. Okay. How can we forget our subgroups? I'm going to say that again. How can we forget our subgroups? We have learned you will not move unless your subgroups move. That is so important. Having said that, the EC students, we are encouraging them to participate in the Jumpstart Academy, which is that intensive five-group student that the teachers are working with. Our EC resource teacher has been critical during our virtual uh, learning experience because what we found is that those IEPs had to be created what we call contingency plans. You cannot use the same IEP plan because they have certain designated times 
that students need to meet with the EC teacher. You cannot do that on a virtual platform. So what we had to do is we had to call the parents in, call the teachers in and go over what their IEPs would look like on a virtual platform. And, and if you could ever sit on a meeting like that, it was a very informative and very creative meeting. For example, for extended time, we realized that to get to meet that criteria for students, we are using our remediation block. So that is how they're getting that additional time that's on their IEP. So that was really good. Our ELL students, uh, English language learners, we are having them supported by Ms. Newell. We used to have Ms. Dahl. Ms. Newell will be working with them in a tutorial setting. So we're excited about that for them to receive the additional support. And we thank Ms. Austin Kearney. She's been on the forefront of that, making sure our students who are, uh, speak another language other than English are supported. And our next one, our classroom safety goals. Now, Aristotle, if you are not familiar with that, it is like the, I call it big brother who's always watching. So big brother who's always watching, teachers can now look using the software of Aristotle, can see exactly what students are doing on their computer. And I will say it's been quite interesting by student, by teachers able to monitor students in real time, what they have discovered that students are off task. I will say this, they're on task some and some are off task. They have been monitoring and noticed that students are going to different uh, websites that have explicit content. So they've been telling the students to come off that website because they can see in real time, students have been shocked that the teachers can see what they're doing. So we're excited about that. They've gone to YouTube and watch fight videos. The teacher caught them doing that. Instagram, teachers shut that down. They tried to um, do what we call private messaging. Teachers are on that. They deactivate it so kids can't send these messages to them that are negative and maybe confrontational. Teachers have shut that down to on the Aristotle and using that Google Classroom. Our school counselor has been very important with our school safety goals, and that is Mrs. Jenkins. What she's been doing is not only providing these uh, cyberbullying, giving them lessons. What does it look like if someone tells you to get online and send me a picture and all this other stuff that starts to happen and then it gets turns real bad? But she's been letting them know what's appropriate, what conversations can you have online during the um, during your exchange virtually. She's also done the character education lessons as well, and so she's still telling them the character about um, you know we have the thing from honesty, perseverance, all of those traits that make people who they are, um, being uh, kind and helpful, all of that is still going on, but in a virtual platform. So just want to let you know that virtual hasn't stopped us here at Northside. Our next one, they are also receiving training in December. We started See Something, Say Something, but now the children will have a representative from Sandy Hook Promise who started the grant that they're providing either the video or interactive virtual um, sessions with the students. So we as principals have had our own lesson as far as responding. It's called tips. We had to have a drill where they would send something out to the crisis prevention. We had to get on and respond either by phone or also by online. So we were prepared for that as well. So when we get a tip, we know exactly what to do, where it needs to go. If it has to go to the authorities, someone else is already monitoring to get it there. And we are also contacting parents. On this next one, I'm smiling because now we have to prepare students if they come back in the building, that's the elephant in the room, school board members, if they come back in the building, we have to now individualize commonly shared items. Let me say that again, individualize commonly shared items. What does that look like? We have bins that we have purchased. Thank you, Walmart. So we also have storage um, storage pockets that they're going to have in the back of their seat. For our lower grades, we have the cubbies that are sectional. So this way they can separate their items. And we also have individual items where by every child will have their own eraser, their own scissors, their own crayons, everything individualized. They don't need to touch anybody's stuff. And I know teachers will be happy because you see kids all over the place. They don't have to do that. We've invested our money in that so that we can keep kids safe. And that was important to us here. Parent involvement. Just so you know, we are continuing that, but now it is on a virtual platform where we still will have our virtual accountability night. We've done that. We've also um, done the parent workshops. We did one for science already. Ms. Petit also did one for math. 
um, actually it was math night. We're working on the virtual science night. Parent portal, very happy. We started with 59 signed up. We have now more than doubled in a matter of two months. We have 121. So from 59, from August to now, we have 121. Mr. Buffalo, who is our um, behavior specialist interventionist, he is on the forefront because some of you said, well, what is the behavior person going to do? And there's no kids. I got you. He is working on Parent Portal, pushing parents to get involved, make sure they know where their children, how they're doing before that report card comes out. So very important on that. And our next one, attendance goals, and you have the data because the school board has seen this information. But now with our faith base, we met with Mr. Lamb, who's one of the pastors, because we, pizza's going to be kind of cold, right, if you do it a drive through pizza. So they're going to get together with the congregation, and they're going to figure out how they're going to change that to support us. We did have the award ceremony, and it was drive through just like Ms. Brewer. That seems to be the go-to now to keep it safe. Parents still got their certificate for attendance. We called them out on the PA, made a big deal. You know, I have balloons out there. And so the uh, students, they were, they were, I guess they were kind of embarrassed. That's how loud we were with the cheers and the noise, but it's okay because we were just shouting them out and they had a great time with it. We're still sending out that written correspondence to parents, letting them know their child's in jeopardy as far as the attendance letters. That is still um, continuing. We do have a case. I will say this. We've done, tried to do everything with the parents, social work involved. That may um, yield to a court case. We're not playing. It's real school. You know, we can only stay the internet for a certain number of months. We've given out hot spots. We've given out everything thing and there are some students unfortunately one in particular that has not engaged and we have talked to the mother and she's going to get them on get them on but now we're going to need some support and that might involve the court system unfortunately moving on to summarize our goal is from a d to a c we're looking at blended learning approach because we're virtual is the way i'm going to say that that's going to be the gatekeeper the game changer our kids come back we're going to continue that blended learning approach that's not going to stop when they you know because they came in the building we need them to continue with fidelity using the software that has been proven to move students Data digs, we have to look at the data for teachers to know about the lesson planning, making sure it's effective and aligned to the student's needs. Jumpstart Academy, that will end in December, but we want to continue it and have our own type of tutorial program that will also occur during those times to make it up. Principal on deck with the observation. I can tell you, I've seen a whole lot of stuff virtually. It was quite interesting. But um, I've monitored that and with parents engaging virtually as well as our students and also giving them that feedback and providing them with the professional development um, that they need. We also have our faculty meetings every week. I will, the last one I want to show, and I hope it can. Um, okay, so I want to see. Can you hear the sound? Let me see. Here. Um, what you're seeing now is just an excerpt from the Wiz. And you remember how Dorothy was holding on to Toto and the wind was blowing and everything was going crazy. That's what it was coming to water. And that's how we were with COVID-19. Woo! We were holding on and blowing. Hey, Lord, I don't know about this. I mean, we went through some everything. I've been said that and it was like a tunnel. Tunnel to nowhere in the beginning. But now, now that we have navigated through COVID-19, this was the theme song. Now, I've had problems with audio, but you remember the song that said, can you feel a brand new day? Oh, yeah. That was the theme of brand new day. And we were excited. And like Dad Frost, I was jumping and dancing. We got a whole the virtual platform. Parents involved. Had a good time. And we are ready. That is our brand new day. That COVID-19, we're going to navigate around you. That concludes Northside's presentation. We do hope you enjoyed it. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, Ms. Dunbar. I truly appreciate uh, your class. You have such a personality. I was waiting for it, so you put it at the end this time. <laughs> you were truly very energetic. But I, I want to just say on behalf of the board, um, mm -hmm. I don't believe you were able to be present um, when we named you as um, Principal of the Year, so we congratulate you officially as principal of the year and thank you for all that yes you, um I, I, will, I, appreciate, I will say if i could have been there i would have I been know. there and it's my business to share but we were under quarantine that's um, okay. i wasn't the one but it's okay but that's yeah. the only reason why i'm gonna say that again 
I the believe only that. reason why I was not at that school, but I want everybody to know that. I believe that. And we truly, we know you were, we understand. And we, we just want to just say officially on behalf of the board that we, uh, we recognize that you are our principal of the year and we value you. We appreciate you and thank you for all that you do to represent our district. Um, Yes. Before I go any further, I'll lean to my colleagues and just ask if you guys have any questions, because I have quite a few, but I wanted to just wait for yes. you guys first. Mm -hmm. Anybody? Yes, this, I have just, again, it's kind of not a question, it's just an explanation or some insight. So you said two things, that you question possibly the viability of the student performance on the testing, right? Because they are taking it at home. At the same time, there's Aristotle that's watching the students. So I guess my question is, how viable is what you're getting as teachers to, to being, you know, the student work and not somebody else's work? And so once again, and, and this was the issue with the um, I ready as far as being able to monitor. There was a window that opened up during that early window when the teachers were going through that process of Aristotle and the trainings. A lot of them did not have the complete training for Aristotle. Some did, some didn't, because this is once again brand new. Everybody's trying to get trained. Some of them had a good handle on it when they did the test. Some of them didn't. Now they're all well versed in Aristotle. So, okay. and, and I wanted to, yeah, make sure we bring that out. One thing about me with data, if there's anything that um, may skew the data, I always present it. And, and that's mm -hmm. important because I don't want to sit there and say, oh, they did it and this is what they scored because everybody knows and every principal knows that those students took that test at home and they have different variations of scores. We had kindergarten kids, some of them go up to third grade. So, I mean, in their uh, um, achievements. So we are working with parents and letting them know as well you know, that let the students kind of do their own work because there were uh, times when the teacher was not able to um, monitor it because it's new, that software, they actually had some parents kind of, you know, helping along because they are in the house. But thank you for your question. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh-huh. Anyone else? Thank you. Linda Joyce-Sims. Okay. All right. Um, I got a couple of questions, um, Ms. Dunbar. First of all, I want to just say um, I appreciate you talking a little bit about the Aerostone, which which to me was a spirit of transparency because at least your teachers, I say your teachers are rocking because if they're addressing those issues, then that's, yep. that's what they're supposed to be doing. So I can appreciate mm -hmm. that. Um, you did use quite a few acronyms, and I just wanted to ask... Um, I think I wrote down the RTI. You said it was an online software. What does that mean? And that's literally the name of it. It is oh. RTI. That is it's not even the acronym. It's RTI okay. stored. And basically, this software, we had a presentation, and, and Mrs. Uh, Jennings could tell you that, but there was a presentation from the company. And what it does is it takes your data. So once a student takes the test, it can then put the student in the different tiers and then it can actually prescribe a way to remedy any of those weak areas that came up on the test. And so they're training the teachers now how to go in to RTI stored and they had to do some front loading, right? To look at what the goals are, make sure they align with the North Carolina course of study. And also they go in and they select some of those best practices that they would use. So if a child is having problems in phonics, they can select underneath phonics what to do with that child. And that's how wonderful it is so that this way we can pinpoint those areas that they're um, having problems in. MTSS, which is a multi-tiered support system. So you're probably familiar with that. Um, I know we've got a lot of training by Jennings, but it just tells us how our kids are falling. And then it shows you that, you know, and how to deal with the way in which they will need services. And that's what the MTSS, and that came about so that we don't keep referring them to EC, right? And saying that they right. need EC services when we didn't try all the strategies we needed up front. Okay, thank you for that. Now, you oh, talked yeah. a little bit about your day tutors, and I know you you said that you were utilizing them and you were moving up to some other grades, um, I think, in January. So... What are you utilizing the day tutors now virtually? Because you said you would move to that, or right. they're not active right now. 
So thank you for clarifying that. No, they are not active on a virtual platform because we were trying to see whether or not we would return. Plus, the teachers want to get used to having the students as a group because bad enough they couldn't service them last year and then to break them up and have a tutor to work with them. So they want us to see and adjust to where the students are. And now we're finding out they have a good handle on it. So now by having that extra tutor, they can use what we call breakout rooms. You know where your students are. You can meet with the tutor. Hey, I need for you to work on this part of the math or this part of the reading. So as we said, we are not going to wait because we're trying to see ideally a tutor. The data shows the face-to-face the -face interaction is significant. I don't know what the data shows when you're working virtually, right, as a tutor. Right. You want to make sure it's effective, the exchange. And it can also be, you know, monitored. I can't monitor what a tutor is doing in a breakout room, but if that tutor is in my classroom and they over in the corner with that group and I'm here in the front with this group, I know kind of what's being done. But if the students do not return, we are going to embark on that journey to do day tutors face-to-face. -face. Okay, great. Right. And virtual. Now I, I have a few more questions, but I'm gonna I'm gonna um curve them and I'm just gonna ask this one last question. No, you can ask them because that helps me with my thought process because this way maybe we need support, but I can't answer you. No, I'm gonna ask for support. So please ask them. Uh-huh. I know um uh let's see, let me just let me just go here. Uh mm -hmm. you are the principal of the year, and so you know. I look at it as I think that I think that you're an exceptional principal and you you said yourself that you were you moved schools and we've seen that at South Warren and I know you've been put in the situation here at Northside where the you know we have not done as well and so I'm asking you as a as a um, principal because I do know that you have moved you did really well with South Warren what are maybe three things that you can say that you use or have used in the past to help move schools? Because we've seen you do it. Mm -hmm. So, Norm, and I will say um, COVID-19 is an X factor. No, no principal has encountered that, you know, right. and no superintendent, anybody else. So that's going to be a little bit different. But under normal circumstances, I can say what helps us, the, the bottom line is you cannot do the whole group. Because if you do whole group instruction, you are missing students that you need to target. And I can tell you, that's what moves us. When we start drilling down what students need, what support. So you got to go from the whole group to the small group to the individual student. And, okay. and that and be consistent with it. And you have to have teachers that are effective. And if they're not effective, then you have to build capacity, right, to see where their areas and where their needs are. So if you can do that and the expectations and the monitoring and all of that, that's what basically, you know, um, and the commitment, I'm just going to be honest with you, commitment is the elephant in the room. You know, you now I can't be just the only one committed to moving students. I have to have a staff that's committed to making a difference in students. And that propels us into the self-motivation, right? So even though if I'm not watching you, you're committed to making a difference, you're going to do what you're supposed to do and what you need to do. So that's what we are working with our Northside staff and encouraging them. The data that we have goes back to 2013. So the data for them has either been a F or a D. So we move um, this school, it will be a historical um, moment that they have not seen here at Northside. So my thing is now that they're talking about there's no waiver for these state tests, you know, that's the reality to move them during COVID-19. So I can tell you, if I can move them during COVID-19, I could probably open up my own school. Okay, no. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's new, it's new levels for us all here at Northside. We can move them during COVID-19. I will say that, hands down. Yeah, but that's it. That's the game changer. You got to you gotta stop doing the whole group. Unless you know me as Michelle and you just know me as class 108, we're never going to move. And that's what I told my staff that we won't move. Okay. Now I, I appreciate you, you saying that. And this is the last thing. Uh, okay. uh -huh. You talked about self-motivation. How do you, and I think that's a key term for all of us in our schools, mm -hmm. but how do you build morale in the schools? How would mm -hmm. you, cause you, you, they have to be committed. They have to have self-motivation, but mm -hmm. how do you as a, as a principal and, 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 and I want to harp on, you know, because you, you set the tone. You are the uh, person for our whole district, and you represent the entire district. How do you build the morale in the schools? 
so what happens and because we're virtual right so i can't put my hands here i can't go right. in and check right. on you in the classroom so that's so it's COVID 19 it's not the right. same platform for building morale it's unprecedented how you build it during COVID 19 which has never occurred in history so i want to just add, you know throw that back out you know as the forefront of my statement at the end of the day we're building morale through the virtual platform so my interaction with my teachers has to always be upbeat, always stay positive. So when we do our work and we record the meetings, you can feel free. And I am like the hamster in the room. Like it's eight in the morning and I'm up, I'm getting them ready. We had the turkey jokes, um, the other faculty meeting. This one we had Thanksgiving, worst nightmare. You know, just to take them out of COVID-19, that we're still people. We still want to enjoy laugh and we still want to have a good time, but yet we got to get the work done. So that's kind of how we're doing. And I left everybody, at least I thought everybody was in a good spirit had a good time but yet they know they're getting progress reports ready for next week right so they got to make sure those grades are in but we have to bring the humanistic quality and that's what i try to do i try to you know really keep it light tell them they're doing a fabulous job i send the emails out posting out hey fantastic staff this is what we're up to at this point you know just keep the energy going i tell them don't worry unless you see me start worrying if I'm not worried, then you don't need to be worried. And I tell them that, and that's the barometer, right? Because if I'm scared, you can tell I'm tense and we're not going to make it. Yeah, it's going to trickle down. They're going to doubt themselves. I'm not doubting during COVID-19 because this is just one other thing that we're able to do. So when my upbeat self and my staff is fantastic, the admin, the teachers we have, Northside, as far as moving, they've always had the staff, but now we have to find out, you know, what was the impasse? Was it not enough PD? Did we not have the software that we have now that they didn't have back then that they need to use it? We've also hired, you know, what I call top 25. I have a grade level sitting on there is all top 25 recognized by the state. So I've, I've recruited them to come in. So I know there's some staff and things that I need. I've got a teacher that's phenomenal handling my math, my sixth, seventh, eighth grade petite. Phenomenal. I mean, she get accolade, accolades from parents coming in. So I had to make some staffing adjustments too on those key grade, you know, level areas. And I had to use my flexibility and spending, right? Because you can get sometimes what you pay for. And I had to, you know, fit those bills. But I know they're capable and they're ranked in the state. Uh, moving kids so and the ones that are currently here are doing a phenomenal job because i paired them you know working with it malloy has been she's one of our reading teachers that was here before um jackie hargrove has done a fantastic job getting her mentors to come in and work with them even during covid19 they still doing the virtual so my teachers that are here who are the newer teachers they are paired up with their mentors so and, and like i said jackie's doing a great job with them moving them great so thank you, Ms. Dunbar. We truly appreciate all that you do and know that we value you. Thank, thank you. you. And keep praying for us. And that's for every school in the district. Nobody has gone through COVID-19 moving to school. I'm going to tell you that now. But like I said, the charge is there and we're going to step up and meet that charge and meet that task. But we appreciate you all, though. All right. Thank, thank you. you. So yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Ms. Dunbar and Ms. Brewer, you all have um, started us off really, really well, and we appreciate all that you've done um, and everything that you're doing. So we're going to move right along to the next principal, and that's Dr. Dennis Carrington. No, I'm sorry, Vaughn <laughs> Elementary. That's okay. <laughs> Janelle, I... You know I can't, I can't miss the, the last elementary school. Let's go. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Dr. Young, Board of Education, my fellow principals and other um, district office leaders, thank you so much for being with us today and thank you for letting me present about my school. So let me go to my screen and let me make sure that you can see can you see my presentation all right thank you all right this is Vaughn Elementary which is a global school so I'd like to share with you some things that we're doing um, this school year through our school improvement plan to move Vaughn school forward and our mission is to provide the learning opportunities that every student needs to be successful at the next grade level and to be productive contributing citizens of a global society. 
So that's our, our overall mission. If we look at our vision, we want to make sure that students are valued and empowered with the skills that they need to be successful and to succeed not only now and from grade level to grade level, but also in the future. On our school improvement team, we have a representative from all stakeholder groups, which include all grade levels, the resource teachers, the teacher assistants, um, and parents. So all stakeholders are involved in our school improvement process. They are also all voted on here at the school. Now parents volunteer, but the other representatives are voted on by their colleagues. All right, so today I wanna to share with you three of our main goals, because like you've heard from Ms. Jennings, um, each year we have 12 and at indicators, and actually this year we added a 13th one, um, but you can't focus on all of them. There will be indicators that we focus on a little bit and we continue on, and they had a bigger focus um, and a major focus in previous years. These three have our major focus for this year. And goal number one is that we will have instructional teams to meet on a regular basis and implement effective pra uh, practices in order to, for students to progress. All right, our second goal is that we will regularly look at the performance data of our students to make decisions that will move our school forward and make decisions about what professional development teachers need. Then our third goal is that all teachers will use the appropriate technological tools to enhance the teaching and learning of students. And I'll explain uh, more about these as we go on. Um, before we do that, I wanna share with you just our most recent data, our most recent valid data. As you know, on the EOG, um, our school moved to from a D to a C for the 2018-19 school year, which was a 60, and we were a letter grade of C. The data that I'm showing you here is what my colleagues have also shown you. However, mine is looking at the March data. I think um, Brewers was looking at that also because that is the most valid data we have. It's not skewed by it being done at home and having parent support. So in looking at this, you'll see that the kindergarten, first, second, and third grade under reading, that is I-station data because that's the program that we had last year for reading. And then for fourth and fifth, they had I ready for reading. Then in math, all of those um, diagnostics were done through I ready. So you can see, um, as you saw in the other schools, kindergarten, when they left us, had about half of the students that were proficient. First grade, a little more. Um, and then fourth and fifth, they were struggling to get 50% proficient. How, and that was in reading. However, in math, um, every in the K through second grade, they were in the 40s and 30% that were proficient. And then our third, fourth, and fifth, as you can see again, were struggling to get to that 50%. Um, we really, what, we're getting ready to hit hard in March with day tutors and remediation sessions when they left. So we are very concerned about, you know, being able to meet their needs during this virtual environment. All right, so we had to look at, okay, where are we going? Even though we're virtual, and if you'll see that most of the things that I'm talking about today, we took the stance of, okay, we're virtual. So when we met in July, we didn't know what we were going to be. So we kind of were looking at face to face. But then when we met in August and September, it took on, let's look at it through the remote learning lens and see where we need to go from here. So if we do take an EOG at the end of the school year, our goal is to have 70% of our students proficient with a letter grade of B. If we do not take the EOG, and we have the iReady diagnostic, because remember, we don't have iStation this year. Everyone's doing reading and math through iReady. 
we want 70% of our students to be proficient as measured by the IREADY end of year diagnostic. So in looking at goal, goal one, I said that we were gonna regularly meet to implement effective practices to move students forward. That was our goal. And to do that, um, Dr. Young enabled us to be able to have an MTSS coach hired this school year slash curriculum coach. Um, we meet countywide to every week the teachers meet um, and collaborate with all the teachers on their grade level at Marion Boyd and at Northside. And I think that has been instrumental in getting ideas from each other and just working together as a large team and not just a Vaughn team. But then we also have grade level teams that meet each week. They meet with the um, MTSS uh, curriculum coach and they talk about what are the best instructional strategies to use with my students. Let's look at the data to see what did we accomplish last week? What was mastered last week? Where do we need to go this week? What objectives do we need to cover um, from the North Carolina Standard Course of Study for my particular grade level? And then can I plan lessons that will be engaging and rigorous for my students to learn the material. Then each month I meet with them. And so as a grade level team with me and the curriculum coach, we look at the data and say, okay, let's look at what happened last month. What went on? What were the students doing well? What did they not do so well in? Let's look at our tiers. Who is in tier one, tier two? Who needs additional support? And what are we gonna do to provide them with that additional support? Then in goal two, we look at that data and you can see how goal one and goal two mesh. Because what I just said, we're gonna continue on with that. We're gonna use that data that we're looking at to make our decisions about what we're doing for students and what we're doing here at Vaughn to move students forward. Well, one of the things is, you know, we are not a Google school. I did not even have but 70, 70 some computers in my building or Chromebooks when COVID-19 struck. Um, so I would not have been able to give all of the students here um, Chromebooks. So my teachers knew nothing about Google Classroom. I mean, they may have knew, known of it, but not how to use it as a platform for teaching and learning. So we had to start at square one with all these technological tools, which we'll talk about in goal three. So as a school improvement team, we had to come up with a professional development plan. Like what is our plan of attack to get teachers knowledgeable about all of these remote learning processes and tools? So that's where we started was with a plan. And the first thing that we did was the Google training. And then we did programs that would enhance remote learning. And we learned about those programs. And then we learned about specific technological tools that they could use to make their lessons more meaningful and engaging. Um, every year we do data training. Usually it's on the EOG because that's our uh, largest piece of data. Um, and Deborah Clayton comes to do that. And then we use iReady. Uh, Ms. Keeter comes and does our iReady training once on data, once we get the diagnostic information. Then, as I said before, in our monthly PLCs, we review that data and then plan for remediation, like which students are gonna be, do we need to remediate? Um, what groups do they need to be in? What specific activities do we need to do with these students to help them catch up on the skills that they have not mastered and to master the skills that they have not mastered? And then we meet monthly as a school improvement team to review that data and to see, is there additional um, professional development that teachers need to be successful? You know, what have you been hearing? Because remember the teachers are a representative of their grade level. So what are you hearing in your grade level that teachers still need and don't feel comfortable with? And then we can implement that. And then having the weekly curriculum coach meetings where they, she can help provide support find resources that they need to have in their remediation sessions, to tutor with students, and then to plan their lessons. 
And then we never, if you'd have asked me five years ago, would I ever have this goal in my school improvement plan? I would say no, because all is a big word. It's only three letters, but it is a huge word in education that all teachers will use appropriate technological tools to enhance instruction. You know, if you've ever been in a school building and know anything about teachers, there's a wide range of the knowledge level of technology. Those that know it well, they are constantly learning and adding new um, Chrome extensions to their computers and just doing all the techno savvy things to the one who, you know, just knows the basics. Well, I am so proud to report to you that my, all of my teachers have stepped up. They have taken the challenge of this remote learning and learned the technological tools that they need to help them be successful as well as their students. And it started with, which is number one, our Google Classroom training. Ms. Aguilar did a training for the county. She did a training for us. Uh, Mr. Kern, um, Connor helped me with a setting up a platform or several courses from Kite that the teachers could go through over the summer at their own pace and learn about all of these programs, Google Classroom, and different technological tools that they could use in instruction. I actually purchased Nearpod and Flocabulary. And if you saw, don't go to the link that I sent you in the chat box. We're gonna do that in a minute so you can actually see what that's about. But I purchased Nearpod and Flocabulary, which are two programs that have a huge digital component. Lessons that are already created for the teachers that are motivating and engaging and gamified. You know, if you didn't know that word, that's a new word now that there's gamified um, digital tools out there that kids can learn, and it, but it's in the game format. Um, and then the curriculum coach introduces a technological tool each month to the teachers that she finds something new and innovative that they can use in their lessons. We've got the new um, Harcourt, uh, Houghton Mifflin Harcourt reading series. That's the HMH. That has a digital component that the teachers have had to learn to use that they can upload um, into Google Classroom and share with their students. Um, Study Island, Aristotle that Ms. Dunbar already talked about, and then RTI Stored. And RTI stands for Response to Intervention. So what that program does, it helps us respond to the interventions that we provided for students. It keeps data, it tracks data of what we're doing to help students or what teachers are doing to help students in their individual intervention sessions. And is it working? Is it not working? And how we respond to if it's working or not working. What will we do differently? Then Ms. Painter, who is our media coordinator, she shares a tech tip like at our staff meetings. Um, she actually does one-on-one -on -one instruction for teachers. If they, if one teacher doesn't know how to do something, but the rest do, they can go to her and they can get the one-on-one -on -one instruction that they need about the technological tools. And then she has also um, held two tech nights for parents to teach them how to use Google Classroom and help their child as we're doing remote learning. All right, so here's a picture, some pictures of the teachers actually engaged in their trainings on learning how to use digital tools. Um, the bottom one is the parent meeting. The top left is the uh, staff one, and then that's Ms. Painter providing instruction to teachers and students. And this is actually some pictures of teachers providing remote teaching and learning. Um, the left picture is kindergarten, Ms. Ramey. The top picture is Ms. Mills, and they've learned how to use, she's using one of the um, components out of the HMH um, reading series. Ms. Colon is at the bottom in the hot pink shirt teaching music. And then Ms. Allen, her internet is not strong at her house, so she needs to come to school to actually use the internet here. And so you see she's got her computer where the students can actually see the board as if they were actually in the classroom. 
And then Ms. Wharton is over on the right, which is a kindergarten teacher. So what are our priority strategies that we're going to embark on this school year is hiring the MTSS curriculum coach and getting her to help um, to help the teachers support them, help them with resources, help them with lesson planning, help them with creating um, intervention lesson plans for those students who are at risk. Um, have a weekly data-driven PLC where they look at their data and see where do I need to go next with the students. I have already done the third bullet, which is um, hire retired teachers to tutor. We started that this month. Um, she was brand new to Google Meet and doing anything virtually. She now has her own Google Classroom and students join at their assigned times for remediation. And she's doing a fabulous job. And then providing digital learning professional development, because as we continue to be remote and as we continue to be remote for this beginning of this uh, school year, teachers have continued to have to learn. I mean, we did a lot of front loading at the beginning of the school year on professional development, but there are so many things to learn and that they can use um, as we teach remotely and that they will use those tools to make their lessons rigorous and engaging. Because if you, you know, if you have to sit and listen to somebody the entire like we have our blocks, you need to be doing things throughout the lesson that's engaging and gets the kids to doing things. So if you would like to go to the um, nearpod.com and put in that code, when it asks you to put in a code, these are just some of the activities that students get to do that you're gonna get to do today that is just like based on the lesson. Now I'm considering this school improvement plan presentation as the lesson. So we're gonna see how much you remember and you get to do the first thing is a time to, it's called time to climb. And everybody like I can watch on my end, everybody who logs in to make sure that everybody's in, um, I can make sure that um, I can look at the data and it keeps the data for me so I can track how well you're doing and what questions you answered correctly, which questions you did not. So I know what to work on for the next lesson. Actually, this is an activity that can be embedded within the middle of the lesson and inform a teacher's instruction through the lesson. Like she could just put in a few questions, they could do a time to climb and she could adjust her teaching within that lesson. The last part of what I gave you is a poll, and it actually polls your knowledge of what I presented today for Vaughn Elementary's school improvement plan. And the teachers can do that same thing so that when the students leave their live session that day, they can they ask an a actual content question or an objective to see what their co comfort level is with that objective so they know where to um, drive their instruction for the next day. So as you're doing that, if people have any questions, thank you for your time. Here's actually some students participating in remote learning. The bottom left is actually a student doing I ready. And as you're doing the Nearpod lesson, let it guide you. Don't click the arrow. It will guide you through the lesson and tell you what to do next. Have you got any in, Ms. Jennings? Um, you're on mute. I started late. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I was just listening. I started late. And it is student pace, too. So the students mm -hmm. go at their own pace, but the time to climb, you can see where the other students are as far as their progress as well, because they're trying to win. It's motivating them. Let me answer this question. I want to get it right. I want to remember what the teacher said so that I, my little person can move up. You get to pick your character and move up um, 
the hill. And if anybody wants to, to stop and ask questions, you can finish that even after um, I answer any questions that you have. <clears throat> and there are lessons, there are activities like this. This just gives you just a snippet of what the teachers have. They have just a plethora of activities that the students can participate in to make the lessons each day engaging and informative for the teacher because the students think that they are playing when in fact it's giving so much information to the teacher. Questions is it Monzeo? Just five. Okay. How'd you do, Miss Dunbar? Has anybody gotten to the poll yet? Well, I It says Dunbar said she crushed it. She crushed it. I, I can't, yeah, I can't see it though. I guess it's not. It just said, so what did it say? It just said, what do you call that? The awards presentation stands and then it has the icons on it, but I didn't know, I didn't see MD, so I don't know. What. It's whatever you put in as your name. That's, that's what comes up. Are you putting MD? MD? But I didn't see MD come up on the winner's platform. It just showed. Okay. Some. That means you weren't a winner. Okay. So who did win? <laughs> That's what I was trying to find out. Because it didn't say anybody's name on the platform. So I don't know. Give me a second. I'm almost there. Okay. All right. It didn't show anybody. Just everybody. So three people standing. So I um I got to the poll and it said it said congratulations first and then it went to the poll, but I don't see yep. nobody's <laughs> name. Right. That's what I said too. No Did you all not put your you had to put your names in to be able to come up there? Of course we put our names in. <laughs> you know we did that. Right. But anyway, I, I, I just want to say I like it. I really like it. The kids, I know that they will enjoy this because it was just fun for me to do it. And and you asked the questions, those five questions were pertaining to your presentation, which I thought was so on spot. And so I say kudos to what you guys are doing at Vaughn. Kudos to you. Thank you. <laughs> kudos. Any um, board member have any uh, questions for Vaughn, um, Ms. Mondale? And I know that we're, you know, I keep talking about uh, virtual and all that we're doing virtual, but it does not replace face-to-face -face instruction. That's true. That's um, very true. We're doing the best we can. Teachers are doing a great job. They're working hard. They've got a well-deserved break um, coming right now for tomorrow and the next three days. But, you know, it's no um, comparison to what we could do face-to-face. Absolutely. Now, I, don't, I have a question. This is Ms. Lennon. You said okay. prior to uh, the onset of COVID-19, you maybe had 70 computers in your school? Yes. So every Chromebook. student... Now, that's not desktops. That's Chromebooks that the oh, Chromebook. teachers could okay. use, you know, to move from class to class. Now, we have two um, computer labs here, you know, with desktops with 25 in each lab. But for students to be able to take home and for students to actually manipulate and have them in their classrooms, I only had like 77. So now that every student has a, a, a Chromebook? Yes, we were given some from Marion Boyd and the middle school, but okay. they are not new. They are used, they are breaking down. I have students every day coming and bringing them to me because they need to be fixed, something's wrong. 
Um, and we sent out the best that they had. I mean, they gave me the best that they had after they sent theirs out. Um, so we are in desperate need. I had new students that I've just had to have Derek bring me some because we didn't have any to even give new students. So maybe you can answer this question that's probably goes with any of the teachers. How do you enforce attendance when there's so the computer access that can be so problematic? So well, you know, Ms. Dunbar said they were sending out, um, you know, that, you know, there was, there was real school going on. So they were sending out letters every five or 10 days where kids are missing. And I've had several parents come to me and say, you know, how can you count my student absent when they can't get on the computer or, you know, the hotspot isn't working that day. So how are we going to deal with, are you going to deal with attendance? And maybe Dr. Young, this is at a more global level. It is actually a state mandate a, to be counted present for a day. The student has to um, have a two-way communication with the teacher. So that means either through a live lesson, like through the middle school, and maybe some of my fifth graders could actually be through a text messaging and for them to communicate with the teacher through Google Classroom and completing assignments. So it's not, you know, limited to you're only um, present if you attend the live sessions. So our data is a bit skewed, though, because it looks like they were present at school when actually they were not. Because in the lower grades, we have parents who are doing the work. So it makes it look like the student is present. Uh -huh. That's but the student hadn't done anything for that day. But according to the state, as long as there's a two-way communication, if the, if the teacher sees um, the student on the live lesson, hears from the student in a text, an email, or through completing an assignment, they're considered present for that day. Okay. So we, but we do have students who are not attending the live sessions, and we have done home visits. Our main goal was to make sure that everyone could get online. Mm -hmm. And Ernie and uh, Mr. Stewart has helped me with hotspots to make sure that if your internet is not good or if you do not have internet, you have a hotspot. The guidance counselor and I, we go out to the homes. We help them with the hotspots, finding a place that the hotspot will work. Mm -hmm. um, we just went out last week. A student called and said, I can't get on this morning. So we went out and helped. So we are... You know, we will do whatever it takes to help them get online, but there are still so many students who are not involved in the live lessons and getting taught by a teacher. Mm -hmm. They're well, that, I wanted to just—I wanted to commend you on um, having your school and school improvement team um, voted on by your faculty. I know, at least from my previous experience, oftentimes they're appointed and some of the people who want to work on the school improvement team often aren't selected. So I commend you for having it be voted by your faculty. Well, that's actually not a choice. That's a requirement. We have, they have to be voted on now. But it is a, a great, I would choose to do that anyway. Uh -huh. But that's how the school improvement team is selected now. You don't just say, I want to be on it, or the principal gets to pick who's on it. The staff votes on who's on the school school improvement team. That's great. Thank you. I just want to um, just say, um, Ms. Monzeo, that I appreciate the, um, I, I liked your presentation. I liked the, um, it was easy to, to follow, easy to read. I, I noted the one, two, three, when you, um, you know, they were in colors. I'm a kinesthetic learner, so I learn by what I see and what I can feel, and I, I was feeling it, you know, and then I like the fact that um, when you open up in your beginning, you use your, your, bond, your school acronym to talk about your mission or your vision or whatever, which was the V for uh, value, I believe, yeah, and the E yeah. for power, and, and the S for being successful, so that spoke volumes to me. I thought it was very creative and it's a way to, it's a, it's also a positive way to help motivate your staff and students. So I, I, I enjoyed that. Thank you. I do have one question. Um, well, I want to also commend all of you. I think it's 
Marion Board, you said Northside and Vaughn, all three of the elementary schools who are collaborating and, and working together to, um, I guess, integrate your learning somehow. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, though, when you guys do meet cross schools, mm -hmm. um, how is that data, how do you guys collect the, um, I guess, the outcome? if that makes sense. Or how do you, do you guys have a set agenda and you go over the agenda or, and then what do you guys as principals do to take that feedback? And I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but it's for everybody. But what do you do to take that feedback and integrate it or collaborate that with changing whatever it needs to be changed in your schools? Because I know you guys, have, I'm sure you have some things that you can work, that you need to work on because we are dealing with some difficult times if that makes sense. Yes, the curriculum coaches that we hired, they are actually um, facilitating the collaboration sessions. Gotcha. So like my curriculum coach um, collaborates with kindergarten and first. Ms. Brewers does second and third and Ms. Dunbar's fourth and fifth. So they're the facilitator for each week. They have a set agenda and then they come back to us and share what is done. Like the coaches meet and talk about their collaboration sessions and then they bring it back to the school. But now the first half of the day is spent in county collaboration. The second half is school. So it gotcha. immediately comes back. Okay. So once they, from eight to 12, they collaborate with their district peers under the leadership of the coach, the curriculum coach. And then in the afternoon, they um, collaborate with their school level peers. Okay. Okay. Now I believe, uh, Manziel, if I heard you correctly, uh, I want you, I want to say you use the data from March to March data. And you were saying that you guys were a D moved from a D school to a C school in 1819. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you wanted to be 70% prof proficient, correct? Which would move us to a B. Yes. B school. Mm -hmm. And so with that being said, I know it's um, this COVID stuff, you know, but if they do test, do you believe that your, your children, your students will move to a B school? I know you're going back uh, to a school that you were at. So I am very worried because when they left, just think of the students that you saw that were behind looking at that data. Now that right. number has increased astronomical into yeah. the, the students who are behind. And some of the students that are behind are not attending remediation sessions. They're not attending the live lessons. Who are the ones who attend the live lessons, do all their assignments? They're the ones that are, are progressing and doing it. And they're the proficient ones. The ones who need it are the ones who are not attending. Now, not all of them. In fact, I did some data on that and 50% of my students who need remediation are actually coming to the remediation sessions. That's good, that's good. So that's half, but when you start giving an EOG, that is gonna be all of them that do not pass the EOG, not just that half. So, so, so my day, are you concerned? Okay. And that's what I was wondering. I know you you have um, been doing this thing for quite some time and and have a lot of knowledge about, you know, I know you were successful with Vaughn. And so I guess my thought process is, is um, but hearing you say that you're concerned, I guess it answers my I'm question concerned. for everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but because there's so much that's out of my control right now. Right, I can't right. control whether you go to remediation. If you're in this building, you're going to go to remediation yeah. every day because I'm going to go get you or the teacher's going to go get right. you and you're going to go to the remediation class. Right now, all of that is out of my control and it's out of the teacher's control. We can provide it. They're documenting that they provide it. They're online waiting for them. But if they don't show up, I mean, what do we do? And they're going to come back further behind than when they left. I know it. I know it. Now, you did say that you and the guidance counselor um, would go out periodically to assist with maybe um, hot spots and stuff yes. like that. Are you guys allowing your teachers to have that option too? If they, or if you got kids that are not showing up for class, can they, they contact us? 
they contact us and usually me, um, Ms. Callahan or Ms. Painter, because Ms. Painter knows all about the technology. If there's something technological going on, she can help with that. Then there are a lot of parents who just don't know how to use the hotspot. We've had to teach them how to find the password on the hotspots and things like that. So our big thing is we want, we want to take all the excuses out because what will they tell you? I couldn't get on today because the hotspot wasn't work. Well, by God, you, I told them, you call the school, I'm here, we'll come out there, we'll help you. So the guidance counselor and I are here every day, and we go out, if they need us, we figure out what's going on, we help them get in, we go out to the house and fix it, because I don't want there to be any excuse why your child was not in a live session. Right. So, so I say to you, Monday, on behalf of the board, we really appreciate all that you're doing at Vaughn. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the fact that you allowed us to participate in your Nearpod. I thought it was a great experience. So thank you mm -hmm. for all that you do. Thank you so much. And thank you for the heart. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I was going to say nobody else got a heart. We're just saying. You got a That's heart, not true. That's not true. I sent you a heart, Dunbar. <laughs> <laughs> I, <you laughs> I miss my heart. No. <laughs> Here you go. Miss Tally Brain, you're setting yourself up. <laughs> okay. Thank you um, to the three schools that have presented thus far. Um, you have brought up some really interesting things, and we're going to continue on with our next level, um, moving into Warren County Middle School with Dr. Carrington. And then after that, if um, Mr. Green, if you would get yourself prepared to follow him. Good afternoon to everyone. Um, it's been great hearing my colleagues present their uh, school improvement plans. As you can hear, um, our district level administration ha has set us up for success here in Warren County Schools. So Ms. Dunbar, I'm gonna present from the other side of US-1, how about that? <laughs> All right, let me share. So presenting for Warren County Middle School, um, again, thank you for the opportunity to present to our illustrious uh, school board uh, members and our district level staff and the colleagues. Um, so Warren County Middle School, we have been on the ground and running since um, taking this interim position on July 23rd. Uh, first and foremost, we identified um, a new instructional focus here at the middle school of STEAM, um, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Um, and so that has been our uh, um, platform as we've been building uh, for success. Our school improvement team is comprised um, of people that were voted on by the, by the staff here, um, all different um, grade levels, departments, uh, parents, students, community members. And so they have worked tirelessly. Uh, we started off the year meeting uh, twice a month, uh, three hours each time um, as we pretty much um, re or regrouped, um, revisited, redone some things here at Warren County Middle schools to set us up for uh, success. And so our school improvement team um, revised our school's vision and mission statement. Um, and so this was um, revised in our October uh, school improvement team uh, meeting. And so as a STEAM school, Warren County Middle School, we create a safe learning environment where all students understand personal accountability for learning, embrace the importance of their role and the school community and be prepared to become successful high school students. Um, and you will see here pictures from um, some of our community um, partnerships um, this school year, one with Boyd and Royster Furnal Home that paid for all of our students' technology fees and below Warren Family Institute uh, donating school supplies to um, Warren County Middle School. 
Our mission is to partner all with all stakeholders to help students achieve academic success through communication, collaboration, critical thinking, creativity, and digital citizenship. And the picture you see here on this slide is our Spanish teacher, uh, Ms. Kloss, uh, facilitating the, um, her Spanish class with her sixth grade students. So some great news um, for Warren County Middle School. We, um, looking at our data from last year, um, we had 15% decrease in out of school suspensions from 1819 to 1920, 18% um, growth on seventh grade math benchmark from um, check in one to check in two, 15% um, growth on eighth grade ELA benchmark from check in one to check in two, a huge increase in our Title I parent night uh, participation. Um, I want to shout out loud that this is the first year in the last five years that Warren County Middle School has been 100% staff from the first day of school, and we are super excited about that. Uh, we have incorporated, um, um, again, the STEAM instructional focus, the five pillars of education that I mentioned, uh, collaboration, communication, creativity, um, critical thinking, and digital citizenship. Uh, we've done some cultural proficiency training uh, we've given our students access to rigor and also have been doing some equity coaching. So I want to share some data with you from our, um, our, our ready, uh, which I was really happy at um, the growth of our students. So looking at our, our ready data uh, for March, um, as other colleagues have mentioned already, we've had a decrease in tier three um, from 58 to 38 percent. Uh, increase in tier two from 23 to 25, an increase in tier one from 19% to 38% uh, for reading. Um, in math, uh, we had a decrease um, in tier three math students from 43 to 40%, tier two decrease from 37 to 17%, and an increase in tier one from 20% to 43%. And this data here is uh, based on our BOI beginning of year last year and our middle of year already uh, diagnostic. <laughs> our school improvement goals uh, for Warren County Middle School. Now, please know that our school improvement goals um, are um, fully implementation. Let me back up here. Um, it's May 2022. Okay, so it's not a one-year plan, um, it is a two-year plan. Um, and so our goal um, is for all of our students, um, ELA, 80% of students will demonstrate one or more great level of growth based on the IRA diagnostic test and EOG scores in grade six through eight length ELA. And please know that with this particular goal, whether we have EOGs or not, we have the IRA diagnostic here to be able to use our IRA data uh, to uh, see and measure that goal. For math, 80% uh, will demonstrate um, one or more grade levels of growth based on their IRA diagnostic and EOG scores in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and as well as those students that are taking the math one EOC. For our science, um, 80% of our students uh, will achieve mastery of um, score of 80% or higher on science, NCFE, and integrated exam. Please know that there will not be any NCFEs this year. Um, so this um, is in our goal. Um, and just in case um, it comes for the following school year, we have that in our goal. But we will have our science EOG um, for eighth grade. Um, for social studies, 80% of our students at Warren County Middle School will achieve a mastery score of 80% or higher on the social studies NCFE and the world history exam. So our first, um, we have a discipline goal as well. All right, Warren County Middle School will create a learning environment where all students can learn uninterrupted as evidenced by decrease in referrals for disruptive behavior. Um, 
our performance me performance measures, um, discipline referrals for refocus were decreased by 10, ISS were decreased by 10%, and out of school suspension were decreased by 10%. And we have uh, purchased educators handbook to be our our uh, data source to be able to help us track our data when our students do return back to school uh, for refocus ISS and OSS data. So our indicator A107, um, all teachers employ effective cl classroom management and reinforce classroom rules and procedures by positively teaching them. And so we have created a heart of a warrior behavior matrix. Um, and as you may have seen on social media on our school website, um, every month we do have um, identify a heart of a warrior for um, each grade level, two students per grade level. And uh, we as a team, we go in a parade style to um, deliver yard signs for our students of the month, for our employee of the month, and also we've been doing school-based light of character for each month. Um, providing uh, professional development on classroom management that will be coming uh, when we, soon um, and, and training our students on how to be good citizens and responsible learners as well as creating virtual and real on-site calm rooms to regain their composure, reflect on behavior, and refocus attention. And just to talk about the, the calm rooms, um, as you saw in Ms. Brewer's um, initial, in her presentation uh, with that Bitmoji room, uh, many of our teachers have virtual calm rooms that look very similar to Ms. Brewer's um, nice creativity of her uh, Bitmoji classroom. So that is what a virtual calm room will look like. However, however when the kids re do return uh, to school, we will have a calm room on each hallway um, that will be facilitated by our school counselor and social worker uh, for kids to regain their composure, reflect, and refocus. Um, A2104, instructional teams develop standard aligned units of instruction for each subject and grade level. Um, the pictures um, um, that you see on the screen is a picture of our um, a PD that was facilitated by our awesome um, MTS instructional coach as we were developing our plan in RTI stored. Um, and so this particular indicator will allow our teachers to use the district-wide pacing guides, developing a formative assessments. Um, so our coach uh, collaborates with Northside middle school teachers and they collaborate weekly, um, collaborate daily rather, um, and therefore creating common assessments um, and also our district collaborative readings that they have again, as I mentioned, every, every week, every day. Um, A401, um, the school implements a multi-tiered um, instruction system that allows teachers to develop evidence-based instruction um, aligned with the individual needs of students across all tiers. Um, so staff development on planning for differentiation using resources, including but not limited to our Ready, Study Island, Edmentum, Renaissance Learning, um, our instructional coach providing PD on differentiation as well as AVID um, strategy. She is an AVID coach, AVID meaning advanced via advancement via individual determination and works on strategies that focus on writing, inquiry, collaboration, and reading. And also focusing on core instruction for all tiers. Um, if we look at, if we utilize our um, our, our rate data from BOI this year uh, for reading, our um, tier three is 62% overall, and um, our tier one and two combined is 38%. And for our math, um, our tier three is 55% and our tier one and two combined is 45%. So we're focusing on core instruction for all tiers um, here at Warren County Middle School. Um, C201, um, focusing on uh, classroom observation data that helps us make decisions about school improvement and PD needs. And so, um, Teachers will be using here a variety of resources, SchoolNet, Study Island, Edmentum are ready to assess their students' performance. Um, the admin team and instructional coach is giving ongoing direct feedback using a digital walkthrough form. And we do what we call a daily classroom duck-ins where myself, uh, Mrs. Lee Easter and Dr. Kofer are ducking into our classes, giving feedback to our teachers and students. 
um, regarding their structure that's taking place in the class. And we have weekly PLC meetings um, that are centered around uh, collecting data and be used to help drive instruction. E106, all about the parent communication. Uh, we have been, as you heard by our, my fellow colleagues, um, doing everything outside the box, thinking outside the box, trying to reach all of our stakeholders. And so we have done um, drive-bys, drive-ins, sit-ins on the porch, um, gone to work sites, um, done uh, telephone conferencing, text messaging, um, going out. Um, I learned a new terminology about laying on the horn. Had no idea what that was, but it's just blowing the horn for a long period of time. Um, so that was a uh, new terminology I learned. Um, and so, but uh, we've been really um, fortunate and blessed to have parents that are really excited about their kids learning. And so our virtual parent nights that we've been having um, for Title I have been awesome. Last um, Thursday, we had our first parent training session that was titled Understanding Parent Portal and Google Classroom. And so we had teacher leaders here that facilitate that training for our parents. And it was also, it's from 6 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. Parents asked a whole bunch of good questions um, and teachers um, opened that door to be a, a gateway for parents with helping their kids with their learning. So we are blowing up social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email, text messaging, the web page, newspaper. Um, so um, we're really happy and really proud with the commitment as mentioned by another colleague of our teachers and making sure that we're reaching or all of our parents and guardians. Our restart flexibilities. Uh, this is a picture of our seventh grade math teacher, Mr. Zella and her students. Um, um, use budget flexibility for professional development, instructional resources, um, an employment requirement, um, restart flexibility. We do have uh, two teachers that we have here um, at Warren County Middle School that have been hired on the employment re um, requirement flexibility. And as far as our calendar flexibility, we've added remediation enrichment to the school day. And each teacher has two common planning periods to provide opportunities for them to collaborate with each other. This is my report, Board of Education. Any questions? Ms. Tallybrain, you on mute. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Chelsea. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Carrington. We truly appreciate your, um, your presentation. I could, I could tell, and I, you had a lot of information, a wealth of information, and I can, I saw the transition from the elementary level to the middle school because the graphics and stuff was not as, um, graphic, if you want to say, but I, I saw the information and I, I can appreciate um, you having some pictures included in your presentation. I do have a couple of questions, but I will um, lean to my colleagues first and um, ask if they have any questions. This is Ms. Bird. I have no question. Thank you, Ms. Bird. I appreciate it. This is Ms. Lehman. I'm just curious, um, Dr. Carrington, you said each teacher has two common planning periods. How does that work? Yeah, that sounds sure. good. <laughs> well, <laughs> what, what, how it works is we have um, we have a remediation uh, period that's built in. Um, virtually is built in toward the end of the day, but when the students return back to school, it's the first period of the day where everyone will have remediation classes. And so one of our uh, teacher our, our concerns in the school improvement team uh, was that teachers. Um, so they didn't have enough planning period, enough planning time to collaborate mm -hmm. with other colleagues uh, with assessments, with lessons, things of that nature. And however, the collaboration with the coach, with our instructional coach, has really laid the foundation for when we return back to school. But that time for, has provided in our schedule with the common planning has provided that, that time that they need to do what they have to do to make things uh, right for our students here at the middle school. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Last year, the schedule, um, refer, I'm using that as a data point, last year, the, um, each teacher had one planning period and one remediation class. 
And so this year we changed the timing of the classes to make it to make it so that everyone has remediation um, the same time. However, everyone still has two planning periods to plan accordingly for their lessons and for classes. Is that a 45 minute block? Do, do, how, how, what time are your classes, Dr. Kieran? Um, are you talking for virtual or for face to face? Face to face. Um, I would have to go look at that schedule. I don't know it right, off right off the top of my head, but I can find out and get to you. Okay, I was just wondering. It's okay. 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 Anybody else? I want to just um, say, Dr. Carrington, that um, I commend you for um, being a hundred percent staff. I think that that's exceptional because I think with having you being fully staffed makes a difference, um, specifically if we were in session for sure. So I appreciate that. Um, I want to make sure I'm clear. You said that your math growth was 18%. Is that right? Yes. The information I shared with you was from the iReady. Right. Um, the iReady um, data. And so it was an 18% increase. And so I know I know that the middle school, you know, somewhat overall have been struggling. So that growth is 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 good. Is that real good data, or is it you don't know? You're not able to know who's doing what. That's that's real good data. That information was shared from um, the benchmark last year. Okay. Um, and so um, and the, the data that I shared with you uh, for September is data, but as, as other colleagues have said, it's not really reliable data because having, you know, folk help them take the, the already assessment. So I wouldn't depend on the data for the, the BOI. Okay. Okay. Now I know you guys are a STEAM school and you talked about if I, if I remember correctly, um, the four C's and then digital citizenship, the communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. So with, with that being said, how does that tie into, so are you saying that you use all of those entities to reach the goals that you guys are working towards? Yes. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, that's correct. So the five C's are embedded into our instructional process. Um, so uh, we revised our lesson plan template this year to ensure that um, we have we know what our expected outcomes will be. Um, so we utilize those five C's for you know you know helping the learn the kids learn how to collaborate, being creative, and being creative could be creating a product that is mm -hmm. theme related. Um, critical thinking, you know, thinking outside the box, being able to, and that critical thinking piece, our ELA teachers are really zoning in on that um, because one of our areas, our, our biggest um, area for our students where they need the most um, assistance in is comprehension informational text. And so that whole critical thinking piece, a whole communication piece will help them articulate what they're reading and being able to uh, come to conclusions to what they are um, looking to do for the class. Okay, sounds good. Now, you, you also mentioned that you guys were working outside of the box and I do see a lot of the um, posts through Twitter and Facebook and stuff that you guys do and I, I commend you and your team, but how effective is that with your attendance? How, is that helping your attendance? Well, that's a good question right there. So um, as far as attendance go, um, that has been a, a barrier, um, but not uh, a barrier that has not been, uh, been able to be tackled. Um, and so with the help of, uh, we do have several kids that our counselor and social worker have done home visits to. Uh, matter of fact, myself and the AP did a, a home visit yesterday um, for one of our instructional packet students. So the attendance piece, we are um, home visits, telephone calls, um, and then a lot of, you know, in talking with the parents, um, the response has been, well, I'm going to try to get them on. I, I, they say they on, but they're not on. You know, we've been taking screenshots. Well, but grandma, grandpa, aunt, uncle, uh, here's the attendance sheet for that class period. Uh, we need for, you know, Johnny is not on. Um, and so what we have realized is that um, parents feel as though, okay, if I give my child get the, the paper packet, 
I have better hold on them. But we learned that the paper packet is the easy, the, the, what they call the easy way out. Um, and so we have identified those barriers and we have done, as Ms. Mazel has stated, um, helping them with those hot spots. Um, in the beginning, we, you know, we had complaints with the lap, the, the Chromebook's not working, the hot spot's not working. Well, all of them are working. It's just making sure you know how to operate the tools that are in your hand. So once we uh, tackled that barrier, it has gotten better. And so we are um, using every two-way communication it could be. Um, far as I mentioned, I mean, drive-bys, drive-ins, sit on the porch. Uh, we wait till you go to the mailbox, okay, uh, you know. So just doing everything so that at the end of the day, um, the parents, no parent can say that Warren County Middle School has not been in communication with them. Mm -hmm. um, I send out um, robocalls every week. Um, send out text messages every week. Um, and so we have learned that the text message method works much better than the robocall mess, um, method. And so it has been um, really good um, as far as seeing the increased involvement of parents and students. So there's still some areas of improvement, um, but we are constantly, every Monday we have our staff huddle at eight o'clock a.m. And so we're constantly dialoguing, um, trying to figure out, identify barriers to overcome that attendance piece. Um, so we're okay. working hard over here. I appreciate that, uh, Dr. Carrington, and I appreciate you and all of your, um, we appreciate you and all that your staff do. Last question, Dr. Carrington, because you are a new um, printable, what's one thing if you could implement doing this virtual learning um, fiesta, I would say, because you got to make it fun, right? What's one thing if you that, that you could implement or if you needed something, what would be that one thing with, that would it would be? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, just, I mean, you don't have to, I mean, I just want it, you know. Well, I, I want to put it like this. I have received um, the, the most, I mean, so much support from district level. Um, um, they have just set us up for success. So really, everything that we need is the telephone call away. I mean, Ms. Scott, Ms. Jennings, Dr. Young, Mr. Stewart. Um, and so really, if I had to think of something, I mean, I couldn't think of it because they are serving us well to be successful. That's good. That's yes. good. And I appreciate, I appreciate you saying that because it's so important that you guys as principals have the central office staff accessible to you to ensure that you can continue to be successful because we're treading some unforeseen times and I know we're all doing it together but it's so much more useful when you can pick up the phone and call somebody and they are right there at you so I appreciate yes. you saying that thank yes. you so much you're so welcome and our class sessions are 55 minutes long Miss Sims all right Sims so that's a hard for you Dr. Carrington and this is a Another heart for you, Miss Dunbar. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, um, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, first of all, I just want to congratulate all of you all um, who presented thus far, because you, you, I know this is a new day, it's a new time, it's new for everyone, and so you are just really out there trying to do the best that you can. Um, one thing that 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 I'm really in favor of is engaging in rigorous um, cl uh, virtual classes, uh, making the classes engaging and, and to en enhance student learning and making it fun. And I wanna know, what are you doing as far as maybe recording? Some, some teachers are better at this than others. And what are you doing as far as recording those really good lessons where students are really engaged and they're using appropriate technologies in order to engage instruction. Um, and sharing those, those uh, recorded virtual lessons with other teachers and they can get an idea how to improve their lessons. So is that being done or is that something that you want to look at? Well, um, for the middle school, um, all of our class sessions are recorded. 
um, even down to our self-contained exceptional children's classrooms. Um, so they are recorded every day. Um, one thing I could say is that with our, uh, vir uh, our virtual duck-ins for the admin team with our coach, uh, we have identified some great things going on with the HMH, with Nearpod, with vocabulary. Um, and so those, um, those videos have been, we have encouraged teachers, um, or pretty much asked teachers to, you know, go into this teacher's classroom during your planning period, you know, and just share with us some things that you glean and how you can implement some of that in our in your classes. And so I've been, I'm really um, happy that a lot of our teachers are so open to their resources and so open to sharing um, that some of their best instructional practices. Um, and so uh, we constantly highlighting those in our weekly staff huddles. But I must say that the instructional coaches are, um, our instructional coaches are doing a great job um, and their collaboration um, timeframes and identifying and helping create some of those stellar lessons. Yes. And, um, you know, I understand that, but I, I, I just wanted to, how, you, how do you assure that they are going in and they're looking at these lessons? Because that could be a positive thing. Because it's, if one teacher is doing such a great job with their virtual lessons, other teachers might say, well, hey, maybe I can do a better job with mine. And if they see what you're doing, maybe they can. And you know, and just like you said, you have to step out the box. And, you know, and uh, many times the kids are, you know, students, and I hope not in Warren County, but in some instances, students are bored with some classes. And when you have to keep them engaged and keep them on point, even more so virtually than in person. I agree. I, would, I agree with you, Ms. Long, and I appreciate that question because the engagement and keeping them, you know, focused and, and on, on tasks is, is really good. And then the collaboration. Um, I do remember the, the elementary um, schools are collaborating together. And so that's a good thing that maybe I know Dennis, Dr. Karen is the only middle school, but it may be some collaboration that you could do across districts like that, because if they have great, um, did a good teaching lesson, it'd be good to share those things. So that may be something that we can look into. I appreciate you asking that Ms. Long. Great point. Um, Ms. Tallybrain, could I interject here for a second? Sure. Um, with our um, collaborative meetings, Ms. Long, we do have that occurring currently. Um, when they collaborate, they're creating videos together, and there's a folder that they access to go to those folders, get the videos, and, you know, share information. Because during that time, it is about collaboration. And that has been one of the district's um, initiatives in terms of the district portion when they get together by grade level is to create some of those lessons to create some videos that are accessible to all those on that grade level. So that is happening. Um, we are still working to perfect it and make sure that it's there for all teachers, but the curriculum coaches and the Scott and you know, everything has just been working. Um, everyone has just been working together to make sure that they have what they need. And I agree with you about having it accessible to teachers and they actually access it. That's great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Jenny. Um, because, you know, I did have a parent um, to um, tell me that her, her student was bored and, it, the, the, you know, there was no interaction. And I, and I said, you know, well, you know, maybe things will get better. You know, we're, we're hoping things will get better. And I just wanted to make sure that students are being challenged and engaged and have an opportunity to, you know, to participate in the classes, virtual classes. But thank you so much. And again, um, Dr. Carrington, excellent job, and then other principals before him, excellent job. I, ju I just give you, you know, you, you have my appreciation 100%. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Long. All right, thank you all um, thus far. Now we're gonna move on to Warren County High School. We're on our upper level now. Um, Mr. Green. Okay. Let me get my screen here ready for you.
Can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay. First, I want to start by saying good afternoon to our superintendent, Dr. Young, to our board chair, Ms. Tally Brain, to our vice chair, Ms. Lehman, to board member, Ms. Bird, board member, Ms. Long, and board member, Ms. Sims. I'm going to be presenting to you Warren County High School's school improvement plan. But um, before I start, I will say that, you know, this new way of learning is a challenge to all of us. So my goal when the team and I met to put together this here plan was to be transparent and just show exactly what is going on here with Warren County um, High School. Because certain parts of this plan, I look at it as if our school is like a car. We have a very good car, but at time car to move, you have to give it a tune up. So we're tuning up some things here at Warren County High School for the betterment of all children to include all subgroups. If you what I've noticed here, I, one of our slogans is forward ever, backwards never. We don't intend to um, go backwards. We intend to keep moving forward, even in virtual. We are, uh, we are doing what we need to do to continue that forward moving. So that's why you will see forward ever, backwards never. Our mission, Warren County High School will provide a quality educational experience by fostering relationships, building connections, and establishing a sense of community. Students will mature into global leaders who will be college and career ready. The vision with high expectations, which is key here. That's one thing that I do preach. We have to have high expectations and expectations for all students. We don't want just minimum expectations. Our students are better than just the minimum. So we're gonna have high expectations and give them the ladder and help them climb that ladder to reach that ladder to reach our expectations. So it's high expectations for each student. Warren County High School strives to prepare each individual to be a critical thinker, a global competitor, and a lifelong learner. This is our voted leadership team. And you can see it's a representation of um, everyone here in the building with the exception of our science department because we have two science teachers. So they were not on board when we did our voting for our school improvement team. And this does include our parent. The objectives for this here presentation is to explain what Warren County High School plans to do to create a culture of continuous improvement. We're gonna provide measurable SMART goals using previous data. We're gonna focus on the indicators, strategies, and action steps that's needed to be taken um, for the school improvement and NC STAR. We're gonna share progress from previous years, and we're gonna include any other information you feel necessary for school improvement. One thing about our school, we are not so proud that we cannot take advice because we oftentimes hear it takes a village but when it's time for that village to give information, sometimes we want to back up from that and we can't. So we're open to suggestions because it's all about the kids. And my question at the end of the day in all my staff meetings, what have we done for a student? This is just some previous data. And we went back as far as 2014 up into 2019. On my next couple of slides, you will see exactly why the school didn't meet. And with those C um, years that the school was a C, how that came about. So, and it's some little information down here at the bottom that tells you why Warren County High School earned a C in 2018. That was due to the accountability and participation. Summative test scores were not high enough to demonstrate growth. Also within that year, less than 30 biology EOC students were tested. Therefore, biology EOC scores were not factored into the accountability. So if you really look at that in summary, it made it kind of easy for the school to become a C if you didn't include all the EOC pieces and your other areas were high enough. All right, previous data, EOC proficiency. If you notice, 2017-18, um, biology was at 52%. And I have some trends down here at the bottom, though, we put together as a team to show you how all of that came about. 
Math one EOC was a 22%, English 234. Math three did not test that particular year. 2018-19, biology was at a 5.9%. Math one, less than 5%. English two EOC was 22.9%. And the math three, the year that math three testing came in effect, we were at an 8.4%. Now, it's easy to sit here and say, well, if you notice these two years, I was not on board as a principal, but I dare not say that because now that I'm here, even though these here previous years, I still take ownership in that data where the school is because you have to look at where you are, where you were previously in order to get where we need to go now. So I do take ownership of previous data from previous years. If you look at 2019-20, um, now this is only for fall testing because as we all know, spring testing did not occur. Um, biology was a 2.56%. Very disappointing. However, we know what happened here, and we have um, rectified that situation. Math 1 went up to a 20%. English 2 went from a 22.9% previous year to a 31%. And Math 3, pay close attention to this, where it says 12%, 60% for accountability. In the fall of 2019, there were 41 math students that tested which 12% demonstrated proficiency. Now for last fall, last year when we tested in the fall, the state only included three of the students that they factored into our accountability. And two of those students demonstrated proficiency, which ended up with the 66%. Um, percent. Now you may say, why only three? It's because those three students had already taken math one in middle school prior to coming to the high school. So last fall when the school tested, the state only counted those three in our accountability and two of the three were proficient. Um, as if we look back at biology, as I previously stated to you in 2017-18, how it came about, it was indicated 52% um, proficiency. Only 13 students were tested for the entire school year, seven of which achieved proficiency. And for the Math 1 the 2020, there were only 10 students to test for Math 1. So that's how that 20% um, come about there. Our culture for continuous improvement. We have revamped PLCs to focus on teacher efficiency. We have continuous cycle of instructional modification based on student performance. We are looking at data-driven PLCs, and we're not only looking at them, we have already implemented them. Because if you don't look at data, how do you know where these students need to go? And how do you know what route to get there in order for you, gonna, how you're going to take them there? So data is important. It's time out for data being thrown in notebooks and placed on shelves. Here at Warren County High School, we are data driven and it is expected in PLCs and you have to inspect what you expect. So therefore, yes, our team here, we do attend PLCs. We have to have relevant um, assessment and this can be done through school net problematic, continuous cycle of unpacking state standards. What sometimes I notice and not just here, even at previous schools I've been at, teachers are teaching and they're teaching their heart out but they're not paying attention to the standards. That cannot happen because the state is not testing us on what we want to teach. It, they're testing us on what they say we need to teach according to standards. So I am I'm happy to say that we do unpack our standards here and our lessons are standard-based. And again, it's not just you are expected to have standard-based, it is inspected as well. And we have consistent staff celebrations especially through this here COVID time, we have to um, understand that we as leaders, whether it's the um, school board, the central office, school leaders, we have to be transparent with our teachers and let them know that we are human too. They appreciate that. They may, they want to come, they want to talk, they want to say, what, what can you do? How can you help me? Be transparent with them. We should never present ourselves as having a silver spoon in our mouth because a lot of us, 
going through some of the same things they're going through, if not more. So when they see that we're in this here boat together, it makes a difference and they are comfortable coming to talk with you. Our strategic plan, again, for continuous improvement, uh, for the staff morale, staffing flexibilities. Of course, we are a restart school. So all of this up here tells about how we um, have that flexibility as a restart school. We'll provide instructional and emotional support to teachers on a consistent weekly basis through PLCs and instructional coaching sessions. Um, we're gonna continue to hire the best educators to meet the need of all students. Even though being a restart school give you the flexibility to hire educators with degrees may not be in that area. They may not be certified. However, my goal is I still would like to have certified teachers certified in their, those areas that they're teaching in so our students can continue to move and show um, progress and also uh, be compatible, competitive with other districts out there because let's just be honest, Warren County is a rural district. Okay, and sometimes when you look at the bigger districts and our students think that they cannot compete with these districts, that's not true. That is not true. And that is one of my um, goals here is to let every student know it doesn't matter where you come from, you have what it takes to be successful. And my goal here is to build a strong team, which is part of that giving the car the tune up to help these kids see you can be what you want to be. And the example of that is, I always tell them, look at your principal. I'm a Warren County High graduate and I'm proud of it. Okay, calendar flexibilities. Um, and we have the budget flexibilities to efficiently and effectively design an instructional calendar with ample opportunities for collaboration. And we are doing that. And as Ms. Jennings said, they are talking across the um, curriculum. They are talking across the district with others and getting those ideas and putting them in shared folders that is easily accessible for those that need them. And to utilize funding to recruit licensed applicants with advanced degrees as a means of shaping and establishing a network of highly qualified educators. Again, just because we're a restart school, it does not mean that restart school should settle for less. You still should provide high quality instructions and you still should be looking for high quality people that can give our students the high quality instructions that they so well deserve. And students performance teacher efficiency by delivering high quality instruction that is relevant and standard based. Again, not teaching what you want to, but standard based and assessing the delivery of the instruction through relevant assignments, assessments on a consistent basis. Student growth will be achieved. And by analyzing student assessment data, again, we do, uh, we do a lot of this in our PLCs. We also need this data for the MTSS uh, multi-support system that we will need to place children on where they're falling based on the data to let us know what type of interventions these children would need to be successful. And, oops, I'm sorry. And there was another one down here, it's not showing it there, but it's also showing the different type of programs under the budget flexibilities that I'm hearing the voices of teachers and programs that they're seeing that they're able to get more students involved with virtual, especially when you we're observing them and we can't see that piece of putting students in groups. Well, some of these programs will allow that and it's called the breakout section. So we'll be able to really see how students are forming these their groups and what they're doing. Action steps, you're going to notice on some of these action. well, on all of these action steps, you will see a percent number. That is because last year before the shutdown, we were unable to finish up with these here indicators. So we thought it was important because we were seeing some success. We thought it was important to pick back up with them and we just wanted the board to know where we were with these indicators. So for A204, instructional teams develop standards aligned units of instruction. We were only at 80%. Now, what we're doing this year to get there, if you look at this next section, I've outlined for you our PLC meetings, documentations. Each department will meet weekly to discuss instructional best practices, assessment data, student performance, et cetera, professional workdays, school-led professional development, 
and the administrative staff will begin working on the 2021 school schedule to ensure that EOCs and NC finals, even though NC finals will not be given um, this school year right here, and courses have access to similar planning periods when available. We would love for our teachers to have that same common core planning. But at the high school level, it's kind of hard to do that all the time because of how the schedules are falling with students and the time teachers are teaching. So we're working on that piece, but it's kind of hard right now to do it based on how students are falling with schedules. All right, our next action step, we were only at 75%. The school implements a tiered instructional system that allows teachers to deliver evidence-based instructions. If you notice to your right of your screen, I showed here how we're going to do that as a team. PLC templates that were designed by Dr. Richardson and Dr. Lewis to steer the focus of PLC meetings. These templates allow teachers to unpack state standards, collect meaningful data uh, from assessments, and screen the reliability of validity of assignments. Um, Standard-based testing, the MTSS from Ms. Scott and Dr. Richardson, she's our MTSS coach which again, as stated, the multi-tier system of support, providing targeted support for struggling students and data teams share findings on academic behavior and attendance um, as school improvement teams meet. And so these are things we do discuss within our meetings to see what we need to do to be successful. Virtual have thrown some stumbling blocks in our way, but however, we're still determined to do what we need to do to meet the success of all students. The next action step, School improvement indicated we were only at 67% uh, with completing this one. The school develops and implements consistent, intentional, and ongoing plans to support students transition from grade to grade and level to level. And to the right here, we have an outline of how we plan on doing that and what we are doing um, even before the pandemic shut us down. Admin led meetings with each grade level that was um, done by me and still is even though we're virtual senior class support team, monthly senior meetings, senior advisor, the counseling services, UNC College advisor. Um, you see Pam Jordan at the end of that. She's our senior advisor, but we also have Miss India Brown, our college advisor, who's doing a phenomenal job getting our children acclimated even virtually for meeting these application deadlines, applying to colleges and supplying virtual tours. Um, foundational courses, yes, we still have children um, coming with gaps, so we have the foundational courses in our EOC areas to get them acclimated, with, which I call that double dose. Yeah, they are in there, so you can go ahead on and they move next semester to the actual EOC tested area. Um, eighth grade facility tour, that's done by Ms. Perry. Uh, we have, again, I talked to you about the college advisor um, and the college visits. We have a guidance information sessions from Ms. Garner and Ms. Board, and they can go into what they call the guidance corner, and students can access that and get the type of guidance support that they need. Our SGA, Student Government Association, um, our parent involvement. We are a Title I school this year, but we did not wait uh, to become a Title I school to have that parent involvement piece. We still um, preach that. We're still doing what we can do to get more parents involved, even virtually. Some of the virtual parent nights that we have, we do good to be honest and get um, anywhere between two to five parents on board. So we're working on that and I'm pleading with parents. When I sent out my um, calls, my weekly calls, I don't believe in parents hearing a computer voice I want them to hear my voice. I want them to hear the sincerity that I have when I say this is a passion that we all need to do as a community in order for our students to be successful. I don't want no computer can tell it the way I tell it. And we have our CTE career readiness, um, which again by Jordan and Perry. Our next action step, C201. We were only at 75%. The LEA school regularly looks at school performance data and aggregated classroom observation data, uses that data to make decisions about school improvement and professional development needs. And we have an outline here of what we're doing to become complete with this here indicator. Data teams, a network of our um, teachers to form that team and look at data, dissect it, 
It's one thing to have a student was not proficient, but in order to know your data and know where that student is, you have to dissect that data to know what is Johnny going to need in order to move to the next level. What is Johnny going to need in order to move him at least one grade level or one year? And our PLCs, uh, we are enabled our, our teachers to create benchmarks for themselves and students. Again, everything must be standard based, not just what you want to, not just to give them busy work, but it has to be standard based. PLCs are targeted to support teachers in unpacking the standards. Um, making revisions and relevant assessment and assignments and analyzing student performance data to increase the um, teacher efficiency. Our summer tip evaluations, yes, we have to do that even though we're virtual and we focus on synchronous and asynchronous. Um, synchronous is, uh, for this here particular way of observing is what we can actually see going on when we go into those virtual classrooms. The asynchronous, you may not see it, but you can see how that's um, happening based on when teachers have that time after they dismiss the class. They have that time where students can come back and talk to them. What are your needs? In other words, is our intervention time. You can see the asynchronous learning here a lot, and you can also see it when they get students that uh, piece of time where, okay, work this on your own and let's come back. And of course, the EVOS data, we do include that on where teachers are and where we need to go. And the leadership team will continue to meet twice monthly to assess progress and make the necessary revisions to our school improvement plan. This is why I say we are not offended when we say, when you all say, how about if you try this? We are not offended because if it's gonna move kids and it's gonna give me that extra belt I need to put in the car to get it moving, let's go for it. Our next action step, school improvement indicator, C304, we were only at 83%. Um, the school has established a system of procedures and protocols for recruiting, evaluating, rewarding, and replacing staff. And what we do here, we have our staff hospitality committee. We have our wingman, and the wingman is, uh, we pretty much, whoever your person is, you just reward them throughout the year. Some, Sometimes you look at that as like a secret Santa, well, here at the high school, we do it all year. We recognize their birthdays. So if I had um, Dr. Carrington, if he was in our building, for an example, well, Dr. Carrington would be give, getting gifts all along from me just to say, hey, thinking about you, how's it going? But we never let you know who we are until the end of the school year. And unfortunately, when COVID shut us down, we were planning a trip off the campus to reveal all of this. So. We're hoping to bring all that back when we're able to get back safely in our buildings. We have the Eagle High Flyer or the Employee of the Month um, voted on by staff. Of course, our Teacher of the Year voted on by staff. We have our um, Nieces Evaluation Portal. Um, if we have to you know, go the route of monitor plans and action plans, it is done with fidelity. But one thing I do want teachers to understand if they have to have a personal meeting like that, it is not a I got you. I always start off with their glow so, you know, they don't feel like they've been beat up on. That is not the case and should not be the case for any plan. You, The plan should be this is to help you grow and it is a monitor plan. This is what you would need and this is what I would need and we're going to come together and we're going to see how we can better um, support you to meet your educational goals because we want to keep our good people in the district. We don't want to lose them. And the teacher cadet program, which that's pretty much, you know, kind of hard to do right now. And Dr. Richardson was leading that uh, because we're virtual. Our next action step was E106. We were only at 71%. The school regularly communicates with parents, guardians about its expectations of them and the importance of the curriculum of the home with what parents can do at home to support the children. And how we're doing this, of course, now Title I, we have our Title I um, parental involvement and your parent meeting. We had our school uh, connect messages. Uh, that's coming from me. And again, they hear my voice. I don't want them to hear no computer. Computer can't tell it like I tell it. Um, October the 10th, 2019, we had the accountability meeting to discuss academic expectations and support. And this was done from Dr. Richardson, Dr. Lewis, and myself. We um, have our newsletter that's put together uh, monthly by Ms. Board. 
We have parent contact logs that teachers are um, keeping up, and it's a requirement that you keep these logs up because at the end, we know some parents are going to have a lot of questions when they see their student is not where they should be because not that you didn't do your job, but the child is missing class, you name it, some of the other things that we have heard in previous presentations. So these logs will help us when parents come with concerns on why the child is falling where they are. And now what do we need to do to get this child moving again? We have, our, of course, our school social media. We have our school web page. We keep that updated. We have um, our parent portal, and we're still asking parents to please come and get signed up on the portal so you can go in and see what your child is doing even before Mr. Green call you at the end of the day to let you know what your child is not doing. We have, of course, our report cards, progress reports. I am still asking for parents to um, form a PTO because I think it's so important to have parents involved with any decision that the school is making because after all, we're serving their children. So therefore, that PTA or PTO is still very important to me, and I'm still asking parents to help me with that. Um, and of course, the teacher set up Google Classrooms and websites. All right, we're getting to the end progress from previous years in 2019. You can see that our English 2 proficiency was a 22.9%, and our ACT participation was at an 85%. I am so proud because even though it may say, oh, that's not a high number, if we're showing growth, if we're moving, then we're going in the right direction. So let's keep moving to get to the number that we want to see. For 2020, English 2 proficiency was a 31%, and ACT participation was 100%. Now, you may have the question, how did that happen, those kids 100%? I'll tell you why. I'm transparent. The three that we needed that were refusing to go take this here test, they were athletes. So Principal Green reached out to the coaches and these students, and this is what I shared with them. Academics come first in this building. It is wonderful to have you as a student leader serving on our teams, but if you cannot do what you need to do for your future goals, then Mr. Green will be pulling you off the team until you can show me you can do it. And I was proud to get that call that morning. Mr. Green, all three is in their testing. All right, our aim, which we call the instructional flywheel, um, our errors of, um, errors of growth, student growth percentile rate, we're looking at that because we need more of our students to grow so the school can um, meet growth or exceed growth. Student proficiency, we need more passing scores assignments that are completely aligned to standards and rigorous and relevant assignments, where we glow, standard-based assessment, standard-based instruction, classroom management, unpacking our standards. I tell teachers, build these relationships because when, you, when a child see that they can trust you, I don't care how bad that child claimed to be, you can have them eaten out of the palm of your hand I know that from a classroom teacher as well as a principal on several letters. Letter, uh -uh. I'm tired, you all, levels. Okay, here I'm just showing you some pictures of students' virtual learning. I'm also sharing pictures when we were in the building and what students are asking. They're still um, emailing, uh, even catching me in the stores, Mr. Green. When are we coming back in the building? And I tell them, trust me, we would love to have you all back in the building. However, your safety is first, and we want to make sure when you come back that nothing happens that we will lose you. And they understand that. We see our teachers in action. This is our um, BT teacher, uh, runner-up teacher of the year. Of course, our students here, and we get all students involved, no matter who they are, what they are. We look at the whole child. And that's the end of Warren County High School presentations. Are there any questions for me? I would just like to start off by saying uh, to you, Mr. Green, um, your presentation was exceptional. It was easy to follow. It was very creative. It was, I could just see the passion from you talking to us to what you exemplified on the um, presentation. It just mimics who you are as a person from the little bit I, I know about you. I think you did an exceptional job with presenting I was very um, 
I like the fact that you talked about when you first started um, forward ever, backwards never. I never thought about it like that, but it, it, it just gleams um, high expectations. So, and then when you use the analogy about the car tune up, <laughs> that really just added to your presentation. So, I'll, I'll give to my uh, colleagues before I ask a couple of questions, but I just want to say, I was very impressed with your presentation. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Any questions, colleagues? Mr. Green, I just want to say that I, I appreciate your enthusiasm in, in saying when you make a phone call that you know no one can make it better than you. And I really appreciate, you know, your understanding that a voice has a, a human voice needs to be behind that call whether it's from the central office or the school or wherever, I think it has a, a lot of impact. So I appreciate your understanding that no one can say it better than you. Thank you. Any, any questions, uh, Sims? You on mute. You on mute. Can't hear you, Sims. I had my mic and my headphones in trying to hear better. Um, Karina, you have an issue with students attending or your teacher saying students attending and to, because I know that would affect, of course, your, um, if we have to do, end up doing testing at the end of the year. Um, and I know a lot of high schools are having that issue, just like they were talking about the elementary school. Yes, uh, we are facing that. And what we're doing to try to rectify that. One thing, of course, parents are getting phone calls uh, from me. And our dean of students, I have, if there are ninth or 10th grade students that still not logging on to classes, I've asked teachers to submit their names to me and submit them to the dean of students for ninth and 10th grade. And our ISS coordinator, she has 11th and 12th grade. They are to make that connection. They're even making house calls. We even have our counselors that will make some house calls. Um, we get our school social worker involved as well. One thing parents has begun to tell us, and again, I'm being transparent, was that you all are calling us too much. And that sort of discouraged the teachers. But this is what I told the staff. We will continue to call. We will continue to send out letters. We will continue to make house calls because they will never have the opportunity to say, you didn't tell me that my child was not doing X, Y, and Z. You're not going to get that opportunity to put us on blast. So therefore, what's going to happen is, I told them, I'd rather you have more than enough calls than not enough. So we're going to continue to do what we need to do. And I'll be honest, some of them changed the numbers, but students will email me and say, Mr. Green, here's my new number. And I text back in all caps, thank you. So, yes, we're facing that problem, too, but these are some of the things that we are doing to try to rectify it. Well, that's great. I saw what Mr. Carrington said. He was 100% staff and definitely proud of that. What's, what's your numbers looking like for vacancy? Well, I will need a um, math one and uh, another health science teacher. And it's not because, like, our math one teacher left, but he's just going into a new area of expertise. So... It's just those are the two biggies right now that I would need definitely for next semester. Okay. And Thank we're you. not waiting. We're already recruiting. I even I got my own little personal list. I don't wait for them to sign up. I reach out to everybody. You know, any teachers anywhere? I reach out to some of my former teachers. Hey, what do you think about coming to Warren County? Come talk to me. I'm just yeah. gonna be honest. Very I'm good. Very good. <laughs> good to hear that. Thank you. And yes, and he recruits even on the weekend, so it's, it doesn't stop. We're we we're, we're on it. All the principals that got vacancies, we on it on the weekend. So yeah, they're they are on it, Miss Sims. That's good. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Great. Okay. Joyce or Linda, take yourself off a of mute. I don't have any questions at this time. Thank, Thank you, Miss Long. Thank you, Miss Miss Linda. Yes, no, I don't have any questions either. Okay. I, I appreciate Dr. Um, Whitaker, you saying that they were, you guys are recruiting on, over the weekend. I'm sure all the principals are doing that. Um, but that was one of my questions to you, um, 
Mr. Green, and I guess you answered it because I was going to, you talked about um, hiring, you want to hire certified teachers. And so I was wondering if you had a strategy um, as to how you look for certified teachers, because it's, a, it's not just in Warren County, it's over across districts that, right. you know, it's hard to find certified teachers. And so right. we have to hire people with degrees and kind of get them, encourage them to go back to school and get past the practice, so to speak. So is there a strategy that you have to look for? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. My strategy is I reach out to my certified um, network and ask them that they know any certified teachers. And I still reach out to my certified teacher friends and ask them, how about coming on over to a, a real district? <laughs> I, love so I do. I reach out to um, a certified network of friends that I have, and I just ask them if they can look out and just ask them to go sign up if they're interested and just shoot me an email and let's get the ball rolling. Absolutely. Now, um, real quickly, I want to just talk a little bit about, I appreciate the fact that you stated early on that you took the ownership <laughs> of the previous scores, and I, I appreciate that because it is it is your school, so it's a reflection of, you know, no matter who was there, it's your right. school now. Right. And so with that being said, um, you guys, you did a great presentation, but I'm concerned about the biology piece. It, was that because they did not test? Because it was like 2.56%, I think it was. That, that was the um, year, that teacher's no longer here. There was some um, extreme classroom issues um, okay. there. And one of the biggie was a the classroom management. Okay, okay. So we were low that year, but and we knew exactly why and what happened. But okay. we, we have um, hired new science teachers since then. That teacher ended up leaving us. Okay. Now, with that being said, you use the philosophy, what you, um, what you expect you inspect, and I like that because I use that myself. So tell me, how do you and your team um, inspect whether or not your teachers are using the standard base goals? How do you do that? I know they put it in the lesson plan, mm -hmm. but you got to go further than just that. We do um, classroom pop-ins as if we were okay. in the building. We do our round um, classroom visits. We pop in and we look at their agenda and things like that have outlined as far as what the student would be expected to learn, what's the outcome, and that let us know whether or not it's a standard that needs um, to be taught. So we do the classroom virtual pop-ins at um, different times. Now, if you were in a regular setting, what would you be doing outside of the pop-ins? I know you do the observations, but... Yeah, um, I, this is what we do, a lot of pop-ins, and then sometimes we split it up, and we have others go in and tell us what you see, and then we come back and we debrief about what we saw. Okay. Uh, do you do you have any of your teachers observe each other? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Now, I want to just, I'll end by saying this. Um, like I said, I was very impressed with your presentation, and I was really impressed with the umbrella you use as a graphic, the purple umbrella with the um, multi-tiered system support. Mm -hmm. And you talked about the whole child, the academic piece. Um, just tell me a little bit about, cause I'm learning about multi-tiered. You guys, when you talk about the whole child, how do you tie that in and, and your teachers are involved in that? Well, well, of course we have to look at the data. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you taught this child English or if you taught him biology, everybody comes around the table that has some dealings with that child. Mm -hmm. And we discuss that child because there may be things that I know that you don't know or maybe some things that a parent have shared with you, which is valuable that we know that. And that gives us a picture of this is why it's not that John is not learning. Well, John has some barriers at home, and what can we as a school do to support those barriers? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sounds good. I, I appreciate um, all that you and your team do. You guys are doing an exceptional job, and, and we just we just salute you, Mr. Um, Green. Good job. Thank you. Thank you, and I thank you. I thank the board and Dr. Yep. Young and the exec cap. I thank all of you for your support as well. And so I gave a heart to you, Mr. Green, but I'm also giving another heart to Ms. 
Dunbar. Thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, goodbye. <laughs> Good so afternoon. Got, I'm sorry, you got to have some humor with the old <laughs> stress that y'all yes. yes, do. Be bored with y'all. You know, everybody, you can at least smile if you don't do nothing else. I mean, that's really, right. Absolutely. It, <laughs> thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me present. All right. Good afternoon again um, to our Madam Chair, other members of the board, Dr. Young, and to the rest of my Warren County Schools family that's joining us today. Good afternoon. All right. So we're going to start with our mission and our vision. So what, we, what will be true as a result of our work is that we will provide, and I'm sorry, let me go back. I'm just so excited to share with you. I am Shanae Judkins, and I am the proud principal of War Early College High School. So our mission and our vision, what will be true as a result of our work is that we will provide our scholars with a rigorous, focused learning environment that will help them bridge the gap between high school and college. Now, our mission is we are going to provide our scholars with an opportunity to one, earn a high school diploma, an associate's degree, and we are so happy to be able to add college credit as they prepare for their future endeavors and their global challenges. And we know we can't do this by ourselves. So we are a team. We solicit the help from our our parents, our community stakeholders, so that we will instill in our scholars the academic and social skills necessary for them to be responsible and productive citizens. <clears throat> Warren Early College is built on six core values, and I'm not going to read those to you, so I've created a summary for you. We are going to work hard to ensure that all of our scholars are, number one, they're critical thinkers, they know how to apply the knowledge that they have learned, and they're able to problem solve because we want them to be prepared for college. And for those that don't go to college, we want them to be, be prepared for work as well. As a school, we take the time to develop the relationships with our families. We collaborate and we make those decisions that support our scholar success. <clears throat> As you can see, here is our school improvement team. And we are so very proud of our team and the work that they have done. And here are three of the indicators that we will place our focus this year. So our first indicator, indicator is that we will provide differentiated instruction to meet the needs of not our high-flying scholars, but for all of our scholars. Secondly, we will make sure that our school improvement decisions are based on data. And lastly, we will bridge the gap between home and school by improving our communications with our parents. Our school improvement team this year is focusing our discussion on three questions. The first one is, where are we? The second question is, where do we want to be? And lastly, how will we get there? And we know that we are not 100% in any area. So we are looking to improve the entire year. So first, we're going to look at improving scholar achievement. So we want to increase our scholar performance in our high school classes, as well as our college classes during remote learning. We don't just want to focus on a test at the end of the year. We want to ensure that they are improving in their everyday high school classes, as well as their college classes as well. So for 2018-19, we were at 75% proficient and scored a, level, a score of B, and we exceeded expected growth. For last year's ACT, 83% of our juniors were proficient, proficient, and we were very excited because this was an increase from 16% from the year 2018 to 19. We also want to improve our graduation rate, and we want to improve from 87%, and we want to move to 95%. We want to increase our scholar attendance during our virtual learning. We want to continue to exceed growth and to continuously improve virtual learning, and not only for our scholars, but we also want to improve virtual learning for our teachers as well. 
not only are we going to focus our attention on scholar achievement, but we want to look at how well we are engaging our families, especially during remote learning. We want to continue to provide high levels of customer service, and we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the presentation. And we want to improve our communication with our scholars, our staff, as well as our families. <clears throat> So let's take a look at scholar achievement and some action steps that we've put in place. We want to continue our virtual tutorial sessions by our classroom teachers from 2.30 to 3 o'clock every single day. We also are going to utilize or continue to utilize MTSS. And I know you've heard a lot about that from my colleagues, but we're also going to utilize MTSS to ensure targeted support so that we are reaching all of our students. Again, we can't just say, okay, we have a few of our high flyers that understand. We want to make sure that we are champions for all of our kids and want to ensure that we differentiate for all of our learners. We want to increase our use of Study Island, Edmentum, USA Test Prep, because these, again, are instruments that we will use to provide differentiation. Our scholars are involved, um, our Math 3 scholars are involved with, in tutorial with Sylvan once per week. Last year, we realized huge gains with our ACT scores. And a lot of that is because they were involved with tutorial with Sylvan um, once per month. And so we took that data and we're putting that in place with our NC3 scholars to ensure that they are successful because they are taking that class through NCVPS. So they don't have that teacher that they, to have those live lessons. And so we decided, let's try Sylvan. And from the first trial session, it has been a hit. So we are so thankful to be able to provide that resource to our scholars. We're also very blessed to be able to utilize Vance Gramble and we have a wonderful partnership with them. And they have instituted what they've called backpack sessions. And these help our, help our scholars to be successful, not only in their college classes, but their high school classes during remote learning. And Again, we have such a wonderful partnership with them because a lot of the Vance Granville tutors have even offered to help our scholars with their high school classes as well. So we are very thankful for that resource. And again, we are encouraging our scholars to continue to participate in their tutorial sessions that are hosted um, with Vance Granville. And as you can see, I did want to, you know, infuse my presentation with pictures of our scholars so that you can see them, see their happy faces. Faces. Um, this is from our very first drive in, just a few of our scholars. And as you can see, they're very excited to receive their certificate, their um, token, as well as their honors medallion. Also, for this year, we are very excited to implement the redesigned scholar progression guide to allow struggling scholars to remain in our program. Um, this is especially helpful um, during this time because, to be very honest, there are some, you know, scholars that we have had to slow down in the program instead of three college classes for the spring. We look at how well they're doing in the fall and we know that not they may not be able they may not be able to handle three classes, but they may do well with one or two. So the redesign progression guide will allow us the opportunity to make those changes. And you know, we want to make sure that we are involved in strategic data analysis and scholar interventions by our staff. And we do have those monthly um, data meetings where we're not just looking at how well they scored in their classes, but we're looking at the whole child, especially now to see how we can ensure they are successful. <clears throat> Excuse me. We do have parent meetings. Um, when we were face-to-face, -face, we would have them every semester. But now that we're virtual, we're having those parent meetings after every progress report, um, report card, and also after we've received notification and they're called a visa notifications from Van to Granville. And that's just an early warning system that lets us know that some of our scholars may be struggling. So when we receive these data points, we pull the team together. We meet with their parents. And I'll be honest, there's some parents after we've met with them probably three to four times already. 
But again, as Mr. Green said, we want the parents to know every step of the way what's going on with their scholar. We will continue to utilize our advanced ground rule liaison in our parent meetings because in our meetings, we want to make sure that the parents know how they're doing um, in their high school classes, but we also wanna make sure that they know how they're doing um, on the college side as well. And we know that remote learning can be difficult not only for um, our scholars, but we also provide social and emotional supports for our staff as well, because we know that when you have happy teachers, you have happy scholars. And for our students that may be struggling and especially with the advanced Granville classes, we have um, what we have coined a critical decision meeting. And this is where we all come to the table. We have um, input from the college instructors and we put SMART goals in place for our scholars. Um, and we give them an opportunity to start the steps for our SMART goal to see how well they will do with the changes that we're making, um, that we're putting in place for them. And these are three of our scholars that are senior scholars that we are very proud of. They're holding their first college acceptance. And I'm very proud to say that all three of them have, I think they have about three each by now. So we are very excited um, that they, those college acceptances are rolling in, very excited. All right, so now let's take a look at attendance because we know that attendance is a very important factor um, in scholar achievement. And although we are virtual, we still want to focus on attendance because we know that we want these scholars to attend as many live classes as possible. Um, so for 2018-19, our attendance rate was 96.14%. Um, Last year, we had a slight increase to 96.27. So these are some of the things that we're doing to increase attendance. To begin, and this has proven to be a huge bang for our buck for this year, we are utilizing our college lab facilitator and she is now our attendance clerk during remote learning. And she monitor, monitors attendance all day. So when a child is marked absent from a class, she immediately starts to email, call, or even text the scholar to see if, or to see if they're having um, technology issues, um, if they overslept, but again, to ensure that we have that two-way communication. If we can't reach the scholar, again, we're trying to reach that parent. We will continue to provide the frequent parent contact, conferences, and especially for scholars that have excessive absences. We want to encourage each scholar and their parents to keep updated contact information. And we cannot preach this enough. When parents change their number, please let the school know so that we're able to contact you because there are many times I too send out weekly calls and you know they'll call us at school. Well, I didn't get the call. And I'm, you know, I look in the system, I said, well, this is your number. Oh, okay, I changed it. So we always try to make sure that, you know, we keep reminding our parents, I'll say remind, to remind them that when they have updated contact information that they definitely need to call us to let us know. We continue to assess our scholars' accessibility to the internet and technology. We do have a Google form that when a scholar is um, experiencing issues with their hotspot, their their, it could be their Chromebook or any other technology, they fill out a, um, it's a Google form and it goes directly to the technology department, um, to Ms. Mayo, the administrative assistant, and to myself, and we're able to quickly assess the problem so they will be they won't be able to miss as many classes as they may thought they if because we're able to you know get the get the situation um, addressed quickly it will also build relationships and this is very important build relationships and provide those social and emotional supports for scholars who are overwhelmed when our scholars know that their teacher cares about them their administrator cares about them we will it gives us a bridge. It gives us an opportunity to be able to help them more. If they feel comfortable letting us know, Ms. Judkins, I'm feeling overwhelmed. My classes are too much. Those types of conversations will not occur without a relationship. So that is what we are continuously trying to do 
build those relationships and provide them with a social and emotional support. Our counselor meets with each grade level weekly and she's doing social and emotional activities with them. She also has um, Calendly and that allows them to schedule one-on-one conferences with her um, in addition to the focus groups that she has. If we realize we're having an issue with kids and we do, um, being organized, keeping calendars. We have a focus group for those students to help them, number one, do you prefer the paper calendar or would you like an electronic way of keeping up with your assignments? So those are some of the things that we've done that have really seemed to help our scholars during, during this time. And I know that even when we're back in our brick and mortar building, because I always have to let the scholars know and the parents, we are virtual. We are not in our brick and mortar school, but learning is still taking place. Learning is still taking place. And now for parent engagement. Where are we? At the very beginning of the year, we wanted to take the temperature of our parents. We wanted to, we wanted to know their perception of our school and of our efforts. And so we released a Title I parent engagement survey, and it is anonymous. And although um, this is not the entire survey, I will share three questions with you. Um, and it, it, it really, it really speaks to our customer service. So the first question is, how welcome do you feel at your child's school? So out of the responses, we had 95% of parents that felt welcome at our school. For the second question, we wanted to know how well our parents felt that we were doing in each of these areas, creating a friendly school climate, establishing a homeschool connection, how well are we involving our parents? How well are we building those community partnerships? And the last question is, we also wanted to know how well our parents felt that we supported each of these areas. Because again, we want to be able to support them, but we need to know in what areas they need the support. Um, end of course exams, um, information that pertains to graduation, promotion requirements, dual enrollment with Vance Gramble, as well as college and career information. And this is the information that we've used to design our family nights that we're having um, that also speaks to our Title I. All right. So these are a few more of our action steps that we're using to promote parental involvement this year. Now, this is something I'm very proud of. We have a parent advisory council, we call it the PAC. So last year, I was, I, was very, I was very upset about our last meeting. We had one parent in attendance. But I'm very proud to say for our very first meeting for 2020-21, we had 17 parents in, attending, in attendance, 17. And I know that might not seem to be a lot, but when you're looking at one parent to see 17, you feel pretty darn good. Uh, and so these are the parent nights that we've had thus far. And again, it goes back to that survey. We've had FAFSA night. And typically when we have FAFSA night, we tailor it to our juniors and seniors. But this year, we want to ensure that we know that our, even our freshmen know what it's going to take for them to qualify for those funds to go to college as a senior. We've had college night where we have representatives from NC State, um, UNCP, um, I believe it was U, um, North Carolina Central University and uh, ECU, as well as the ACA 115 support meetings. And ACA 115 is the very first college class that our freshmen take. So we wanted to make sure that not only did the scholars know about the class, we wanted to make sure that parents had a very strong understanding of the class and what would be expected of their scholars during this semester. As far as parent portal and Moodle goes, for parent portal last year, we were at about 51%. So this year, we have risen to about 60%. So we are very, very proud of that. And also with Moodle, Moodle is the learning management system that Vance Granville uses. And Moodle does not talk to PowerSchool. So parents cannot pull up their child's grades in psychology, humanities, in, in, in parent portal. And so we've instituted Moodle Mondays. 
So Moodle Mondays is um, something new for this year that will allow our scholars on Monday to log into their Moodle account and to show their parents how they're doing in their college classes. For kids that may be doing well for that week, they talk about their glows. But for those that are experiencing issues, they talk to their parents about some things that they may need to work on. And if there are issues that they feel that we can be of assistance, they contact us as well as their college liaison, Ms. Good. We will continue our virtual phone and individual parent meetings to ensure scholar success and also to build relationships with our parents. All right, lastly, we want to increase the awareness and exposure of Warren Early College High School. We're doing wonderful things and we want everyone to know about it. So we're gonna to continue to update Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the Warren Record. This year, we have our monthly electronic newsletters and the parents, actually, they love them. Um, our school and our district websites, as well as the app. And I'll tell you a little something funny about Facebook and Instagram. Again, this is high school. And so I found out when we first developed our Facebook page, you know, I was so excited telling the kids, look, you know, I put your pictures on Facebook last night. They're like, we don't, we don't use Facebook. Our mamas use Facebook. So for them, I developed Instagram. <laughs> so it's very funny that when we look at Facebook and we try to really look at the data and the usage it's the parents, the students. We may have maybe five likes from our students on Facebook, but if you go to Instagram, it's flooded. So again, this is knowing your kids and knowing what they will feel is something that will highlight them. And they love being highlighted on Instagram and Twitter. We will continue to make those weekly calls home to share important information. And in our survey, parents have requested um, more surveys. We asked them, how would you like to um, give us your input for important things involving your school? And they said they wanted more frequent surveys. And so we are providing more frequent surveys for our parents. Um, and we're also seeking ways to increase virtual service learning opportunities for our scholars. Um, we have a saying at school is see a need and fill a need, because we want to make sure that you know, you may have all that you feel you need, but we want you to look at the broader picture and we always want you to be able to give back um, to your community and be a blessing to, you know, be a, be a blessing to your neighborhood. So we are actively seeking. And if anyone has any ways that I can involve our scholars um, in a virtual service learning opportunity, I would greatly appreciate that because they do have to have um, service learning hours. That is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Do you have any questions for me? Well, I would just like to say, Miss um, Miss Jerkins, that I enjoyed following your presentation, even though you you had a great background. So the presentation was so easy to read and follow, and I can appreciate that. But then I love the fact that you input all of those beautiful faces of your students into your presentation, which spoke volumes to me about how you guys just engage with each other. So I appreciate that. But I want to just give you kudos on a couple of things. Um, you, you do a really good job with getting your kids out there with this. I see it on Facebook because I'm old, I guess. <laughs> I am too. And I, to, and I have to get involved with this Instagram because I notice I do look at it periodically, but the kids respond so well to you on Instagram. And I think that that's exceptional. And I haven't looked at a lot of other ones, and I'm sure all of you probably are doing it, but I give you kudos because you. you guys do a really good job as a team with putting the things that you do get out there. And um, the other, I'll, I'll, I'll lean to my, um, colleagues real quick before I go into a couple of other things I would like to talk about. But I just say, thank you. You did an excellent job with the presentation and thank I enjoyed you. looking at all the pictures. Thank you. Yes, I would just like to say that I like the, the way you use your college lab facilitator as <laughs> attendance clerk. clerk. Yes. So that's really good. And, and I think that's something we should all, you know, keep in mind. It has been so helpful. Yeah. It's so helpful. It's very, very important. And, you know, because we need to get these kids 
involved with this this virtual learning and um, and have them on board and whether it's a technology problem, whether it's a, a problem, like you say, overslept, we just need to make sure that they get on and let them know. And you might, um, like you say, you, you use more than one way. Yes. You, you might have, right. You might have a tennis clerk, then you might have the teacher doing it. You might have the principal doing it also because you let them know. And, and you know, and, that, and one thing I do know, when you kind of wear the parents a lot, they finally get the message and say, okay, we'll get this done. So thank you so much. I and you know, it's, and it's so, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Ms. Long. It's so much harder when it's high school because at the high school level, and I see Mr. Green agreeing with me, when they're at the high school level, parents automatically have just given them this magical key to say, you know what, you got it from here. So, you know, you go ahead, you have kids that are, we've had to contend with jobs, you know, kids are working, kids are driving. So we have to have that relationship with them to say, listen, I know you got a lot going on, but I need you in class. And to be very creative in how you get them in those classes. So it's just a different, it's just a different fight when you're in high school and the kids are kind of left to do what they want to do. Right. Anybody else? Yes, I have a question. Um, when you were talking about uh, Ms. Judkins' uh, resources that your scholars had, you talked to about Study Island and Edmentum, which I, we're familiar with. I think those are district-wide. And then you also said USA Test Prep and um, Sylvan Learning Center. How does how does that work? Sylvan. Uh huh. Okay. Is Sylvan. that something that any student can use? You well, with Sylvan, I'll, I'll go back to the year before last. Um, we were utilizing a different company for ACT, and I believe it was five to seven sessions, but it was five thousand dollars. So when the school improvement team came back around the table, we're just like, you know, we're trying to really cut corners to see, we, made, we want to make sure we got the best bang for our buck. And mm -hmm. I knew about Sylvan and I reached out to them. It's the Wake Forest branch because the one in Henderson is no longer um, open. And they were able to provide us with 10 sessions for $2,250, which is less than half of what the other company allowed. They drove from Wake Forest for face-to-face -face sessions. They provided them with the materials as well as a mock ACT. And after they took the mock ACT, um, they were able to look at the data to see the areas that they needed to work on. Um, so that's that's really how we stumbled upon Sylvan. We were trying to make sure that, you know, that $5,000, to see if we could do better with the $5,000. And again, the gains that we realized and the comfort level of the students that we saw walking into the test that day was a huge difference from the year before. They were, they were very comfortable. They weren't nervous. Um, they knew what to expect. And especially for our scholars that have test anxiety, when we talked to them after the test, they were so much at ease. So we knew that when it came to tutoring for um, our math three, we again reached out to them and they were able to help us out and the sessions have been going very well so far. So when you say we, is that just early college or is that we the district? Well, actually the high school principals and I have talked and I'm sharing that information with them. So I don't know, you know, what the other schools, but the high school principals and I, you know, we talk and that was something that they're interested in. So that's something that, um, that information I'll be sharing with them as well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Sam's or Linda? Are we good? Yeah, so is that, is that, just, is that to all of your students or is that just the 10th graders? For the ACT, because I'm in 11th graders. I know you take it in 11th grade. Last year, we were just going to try out, um, the, we just tried out the 11th grade. But for this year, and of course, we have we have not had an opportunity, we wanted to start training um, in the 10th grade mm -hmm. so that they will have two years 
of the right. tutorial sessions for when they took the test in 11th grade. But of course, uh, we weren't able to do that. And with the cl the college classes, we just didn't want to add another um, virtual class for them to be involved, our 10th graders to be involved in. But yes, okay. it was last year, it was just, and this year is for the 10th grade, for the 11th grade students, as well as for those that are in math three. Okay, and, it is, it, and you all um, do the cost totally, it's not a cost to the students? No, it's no cost to the students. Okay. okay. All right. So, Mr. Green, you all considering that? That would definitely be an option. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like it would definitely be something that should be countywide for the high school high school students. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Um, Linda, did you have anything? I don't want to overlook you. No question. Okay, great. Um, I appreciate Ms. Long um, sharing her thoughts about the attendance, Clark, that you that you are utilizing, um, Ms. Jenkins, Ms. Um, Ms. Jerkins, I'm sorry. And the reason why I say that, I, I say kudos to you is because, because we do have an issue across, and this is for everybody, because we do have an issue across district in the, in the schools with attendance for you to utilize that, I think you said it was a, um, your college facilitator or something? Yes, the lab facilitator. Yes, I, I think that's exceptional. And I think that's something that it should be a best practice for all of, like Joyce was saying, because it really does help you monitor those kids and get on them immediately. You know, and sometimes a day go by and you'd be like, well, we haven't heard from such and such, but if you got that person monitoring it. So I say, I, I think that's exceptional. The other thing is I wanted to ask, um, you do tutoring, I think you said from 2.30 to 3 o'clock, if I remember. Yes. So how, how does that work? So they, they do classes, you know, from the morning until the 2.30, and then they go into tutoring? Yes. Um, and, and now it's if the teachers, depending on the, the standards that they're working on that week, they will have those groups from 2.30 to 3. We don't require for every single kid because again, we want them to be able to receive the tutorial service that Vance Gramble has to offer as well. And we don't want them online from nine to six o'clock. So we right. try to make sure we use that time for either your high school or for your, um, your right. Vance Gramble tutorial sessions as well. And again, the Vance Gramble tutors um, have even offered to help our scholars with their high school classes if they request that. So, you know, we've just tried to give them that blanket and mm -hmm. that safety net for all of, because it's, it's difficult. It's difficult yeah. when they are face-to-face, -face, when you have scholars that have an entire high school schedule, but then they have nine hours for college courses. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to infuse every layer of support that we can in their day without burning them out. That's that's the important thing that we're working mm -hmm. on now is to just to not burn them out. Okay, okay. Now you were saying that, so are the, are the kids utilizing the resource from the um, the college tutors? Are they accepting that? Yes, that's yes. Mm -hmm. And good. even the teachers have even, um, with our ninth graders, you know, we requested that she, you know, just come in so they can hear the, her live voice because it's an online class to hear her live voice and just to see her face and interact with the scholars. And she, she agreed to do that. When we have our sessions at night, we have um, myself, Ms. Parks, our liaison, but the teacher, the actual instructor to the class, she wow. joins in at night to discuss, you know, some of the problems that the kids are having, some of the questions and concerns. So they are they are really bending over backward to try to help as much as they can. And we really appreciate the partnership we have with them. Wonderful. And I just want to just say again, I appreciate the fact that you have incorporated this civil learning because um, it just seems like this is going to be very um, helpful to your kids and across the district too. I hope we would just kind of take advantage of that and you guys is is the smart goals i'm familiar with the smart goals is that something that's in a curriculum that you guys can use as high school is, 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 is that across the board or do you guys create your own we create our smart goal smart goals especially in our focus groups um, when kids are experiencing issues to break you know break it down especially for parents right. in, in bite-sized chunks for them um, so that they're able to help as well, because it's great when we can help our students on our side, but let's face it, the parents 
we want to be able to give them things because I know it may not seem like it, but a lot of parents, they want to help, but they don't know how to help because school is not a, always a good experience for them. So we try to give the parents things that they can do. Buy a planner, sit down with your child with your class syllabi and to complete your, you know, your weekly schedule of the assignments that you have. Those are things that our parents can do and they don't feel intimidated by it. But if you say, I need you to help tutor your child with math three, mm -hmm. you're going to lose them. Right. But if you give them things that they can do, they feel comfortable with, feel comfortable with, they won't shy away from school because the goal is to engage them, to bring them in to help us, but you can't scare them away. That's right. You can't scare them away. That's good. So I, Sinead, uh, Principal um, Jerkins, I appreciate, I appreciate all that you're doing. Seem like you really have a great handle on um, your, your school because you talk about, and one of the things I wanted to just say to you, the engagement you guys are focusing on with your family members, I think that is key. And I appreciate that even though you started out with one parent the first session, but you got 17, I think that's exceptional. So thank you, thank you so much for all thank that you. you and your team do. We truly appreciate you. And thank you for your support as well. Absolutely. And I and I did give a heart to Shanae, but I also, this this heart will go to Dr. Young, not you, Ms. Dun, um, Dunbar. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Dr. Matney, are you, you ready to jump in? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. All right. Well, hello, everyone. I, I have to start by saying I sure am glad I didn't have to follow our principal of the year. Um, you know, you're a tough, enthusiastic act to follow, <laughs> Dunbar. Uh, and while Ms. Mizell certainly rose to the equation, I'm glad I didn't have to be the one to do that. Um, let me share my screen. Where's my reactions? Is that clear for everyone? Very good. Well, um, members of the board, Madam Chair, Dr. Young, fellow colleagues, again, good afternoon and happy Thanksgiving. It's my privilege today to share with you details of our ongoing plan for continuous improvement at the Good Warren New Tech High School. Since our founding in 2007, we have been an organization driven by purpose. That purpose is guided by our vision seen before you, where we seek to graduate each student prepared for college, career, or service to our nation in the armed forces. An integral part of that commitment to young people is based on the National New Tech Network's dedication to active project-based learning. Our mission is to remain an outstanding school of choice where our students remain engaged in active learning, promoting the development of 21st century skills skills essential to success in this global competitive society. The foundational beliefs undergirding our school improvement plan include commitments to creating a collaborative learning environment, maintaining a safe and nurturing atmosphere where student learning is optimized, instilling in young people ownership of their learning, creating partnerships with families and the community at large, and always being mindful of our responsibility to serve as positive, encouraging, role models. We at New Tech received a letter grade of C for the 2018-2019 academic year on the North Carolina State School Report Card. As you know, we have become accustomed to a grade of at least a B historically, and that is where we seek to return. In 2018-2019, we met growth and came only four one hundredths of a point from exceeding growth, according to the EVOS model. Growth, as you know, counts for 20% of the composite score of 57, with 80% determined by performance on end of course test. Our goal remains to increase that composite score by at least 13 points. On those tests determining our performance on the state report card, uh, we saw data as shared on the screen before you. English 2 increased from 61.8% proficiency in 2018 to 62.1% in 2019. We aspire to increase that to at least 72.1% this year, and we are headed in the right direction as our fall 2019 English 2 scores manifested a 66.7% proficiency rate 
again, well toward achieving that goal of 72.1. Of course, and as you, know, as you know, with the development of COVID, the fall rendering of the English test was the only EOC undertaken during the 2019-2020 academic year as our biology and math one test were slated for administration at the end of the spring semester. With that caveat before you, since 2018, we have seen our proficiency rate in biology rise from 30.4% in 2018 to 48.1% in 2019, with our goal to achieve, like on other EOCs, a 10% increase in the high point of proficiency to 58.2%. In Math 1, our 2018 proficiency rate of 38.2% declined in a standard setting year to 22.9% in 2019. Our goal is to see that rate rise of proficiency to at least 48.2% in 2021. Our cohort graduation rate improved from 83.8% .8 in 2019 to 87.9% last year. Our goal for 2021 is to enjoy a graduation cohort rate of no less than 91%. In 2019, our ACT proficiency rate was 48%. We would like to see that rise to no less than 60% in 2021. Undergirding these improvement efforts is a dedicated school improvement team, including the good folks that are set before you. A welcome and invaluable addition to that body for this academic year 2021 is our instructional coach and MTSS coordinator, Cecilia Aguilar. In addition to our mission and vision, state, vision statements, we are guided in our improvement efforts by the indicators set forth by the North Carolina Department of Education and as alluded to earlier by Ms. Jennings. Among the most notable are those delineated before you, including a dedication to engaging and differentiated instruction, clear and regular communication with families regarding expectations and how the home can insist in student academic success, and a steadfast dedication to ongoing data analysis designed to inform instructional practice and instructional improvement. As noted earlier, our goal remains to increase our high points of performance and proficiency by at least 10% in each EOC in 2021. To that end, we have crafted a master schedule where all EOC courses are preceded by a semester of an introductory course, so students receive instruction in these important areas each day, every day, for the duration of the full academic year rather than just one semester. We are partnering with the North Carolina Virtual Public School and have established a collaborative teaching model in each end of course subject. We have built into each day a period devoted to enrichment, intervention, and remediation. That period is part of each school's, each student's schedule at the school, and it is called our joust period. We are complementing daily classroom instruction with standards-based online assessment systems, and we remain dedicated to data-driven decision-making and ongoing professional development. In fact, we just completed a very, very valuable three-day virtual leadership summit with the National New Tech Network at the end of last month. To further enhance our graduation cohort rate, we are committed to credit recovery, allowing students to retake courses where they may have struggled. We are also working on additional ways we can reach out to parents on the critical nature of securing one's high school diploma, particularly within four years. To enhance our students' performance on the ACT, we have created and now implemented a daily ACT preparatory course, which focuses on the development of literacy, as well as important test-taking strategies. Our JAUS period, as mentioned before, again offers students opportunities for enrichment, intervention, and remediation. We also remain grateful for Title I funds now at the high school level, which can be used for potential tutors to support students and their parents. Also integral to our improvement efforts is the commitment to increasing parental involvement. This includes personal invitations to families for events like open house, important information nights for topics which can be difficult to navigate like FAFSA, and we remain committed also to ongoing public celebrations of student success, which has included an increase in our social media presence where we have been able to share very, very liberally 
uh, the good things going on here at the home of the Knights. Um, and we also want to continue uh, what we found to be a very, very successful drive through academic recognition ceremony um, late last month. These efforts also demonstrate a dedication to maintaining a safe and secure environment needed to maximize student learning from the execution of regular safety drills to the vigilant monitoring of security cameras. We're especially excited about the pending implementation of the state Say Something program, focusing on an anonymous tip line and bullying prevention. Proud of what we've accomplished, dedicated to building upon those successful and grateful to you for all of your support. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Well, I would just like to say to you, I believe I wanna pronounce your name correctly. Dr. Matney, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I would like to say to you, we, uh, your presentation was so very easy to follow and you just have a voice that is so engaging that it just kept, it kept me in tune to listening to what you have to say. And I appreciate that. The one thing that I would like to say to you when you um, first open up with your presentation is, and I think this was the philosophy of our superintendent when she first came, is that we are champions for our students. And so I saw that on your first slide and I was looking for that throughout all of the other presentations but, and I got to the end and I saw yours and I really, really got happy because that's truly what we are as a district champion for our students. So kudos to you and all that you and your team do. Thank you. And I have to say, uh, I see that devotion to that mantra manifest every day. Um, I have been so warmly welcomed by this team. I feel honored to be a part of it. Uh, again, you could not ask for a more supportive team. Um, but again, I see that commitment made manifest um, every single day. Wonderful. We appreciate hearing that too. I give way to my colleagues. Do you guys have any questions for Dr. Matney? Yes, I have a question. Um, can you elaborate a little bit on the EOC intro courses? So EOCs is English 2, Biology, and Math 1. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am, and, and, and including Math 3 um, uh, here uh, in very, very short order. Uh, what we found uh, was, again, a very, very fast-paced semester course in these critical areas uh, sometimes proved to be insufficient. It's breakneck pace on a 4 by 4 You're meeting every day for 90 to 95 minutes. Um, the, the previous administration had implemented, wholeheartedly agree with it, had done it in other places where I've been privileged to serve, um, what has it been said sometimes you must allow students to learn as quickly as they can or as slowly as they must. And uh, when you are able to find uh, in the uh, course directory provided by the State Department of Public Instruction introductory courses, introduction to biology as a prelude to the regular biology class, uh, reading interve intervention strategies as a prelude to English 2, uh, and in the introductory to math class as a prelude um, to math 1, um, again, that just allows us to, in one fell swoop, as, as Shakespeare said, to, to double uh, the amount of exposure uh, to those critical areas. So um, I, I, I anticipate great gains. I've seen them before. I think that's going to be no different here in this venue um, when you're giving um, students uh, access to material uh, throughout the year every day. Um, I, I, I've got to think, uh, and based on past experience, uh, that that will prove invaluable. So how does, does that count as an elective? How does that, that so you're getting two credits, so that it counts might. as an elective. So do, that's a pretty significant addition. Does it give the student, the scholar, enough time to get the other electives? Yes, and as you, as you have suggested, um, um, uh, when that had been proposed in other areas I've served without the two credits, uh, there was some consternation. So again, that's been cleared with Raleigh and the State Department that that is something that we can in fact uh, award them uh, two credits as they get ready for that important EOC. So every student takes this course, right? This course, this, this, okay. Well, unless of course you're taking, we do have a group of students in this particular uh, semester that are taking a, a, an honors level English too they would not necessarily be okay called. if okay that makes sense yes ma'am okay thank you yes ma'am anyone else I, I wanted to ask a question dr matney about um 
you talked a little bit about the teaching model from you guys had created a partnership with the North Carolina Virtual Public School something? Yes, ma'am. Uh, that that allows for um, collaboration. Um, you get kind of two for one. Um, each of our EOC teachers are partnered with uh, an instructor that is teaching in a virtual platform. How invaluable, particularly during this time of COVID. Right. Uh, but again, it is a, a built-in model of collaboration where, again, you've got someone to talk to. Uh, you've got some someone that you can, as necessary, in limited fashion, vent to. Uh, but most importantly of all, you can put your heads together on the best way to deliver the instruction uh, in math, in life science, uh, and in language arts. And so I guess my question is, is these are folks that you partner with to help your teachers out, correct? Or help the students? The well, teachers. they have access to both. Um, again, it's, it's, it's a collaborative teaching model between the two adults, but both of those adults uh, have access to and interaction with and engagement among uh, the students in those classes here. And it's focused on helping our students with their EOCs, correct? Precisely. So I'm wondering if that's something that, um, Ms. Jenkins, that we could do across the board. I mean, I don't know if we have thought about that. That's a good asset. Yes, we do have that at every high school. Every okay. high school has access to that, um, those services. Oh, okay, great. I thought that was a highlight for you, um, Dr. Matney. And also my other question to you was, you talked about indicators and I saw on your, um, your presentation, you had this circle that inside the circle was your act, the plan, the check, the do. What do you, talk a little bit about what that, was uh, just a graphic manifestation of the important process, which is the foundation for the continuous improvement model. Okay. Um, so an example. You know, okay. Right. We act, we look at it. If it's not, we, we plan, we act, we do, we revise again in that continuous process, you know, finding what has worked well um, and then finding things that maybe didn't work as well and refining them in that spirit of continuous improvement. Okay. And I wanted to ask, um, you gave an example in your presentation about that composite score. And I think you, mathematically you were able to show us in a demonstration about the 20%. Um, I wanted to, yeah. Um, maybe send that to Dr. Young and send that to me because I want to be able to figure out how to do those composite scores and looking at that data. I thought this was really good breakdown. Um, and then you said your goal was to increase 13 points, right? Yep, that's all right. That would get us from the 57 to the 70, which it's, gets us into that B realm. And I've got to, I got to give props. Um, being relatively new to the state of North Carolina, um, again, folks right here, Dr. Young at Al, uh, got me schooled real quickly on how to derive that mathematical formula, that algorithm, and that kind of thing. So I've got to give them credit um, for the derivation of, of 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 that score. But yes, man, we want to get to um, the the 70. Uh, and, and certainly, hopefully, well beyond that. I am proud of what has been done here in the fact that growth was met um, and, and just nigh unto exceeding growth. And, you know, there are those uh, scholars out there that would say that really the model should uh, uh, acknowledge growth, um, which is really what we have volitional control over, um, should count more than 20%. Um, in Virginia, from whence I come, it counts upwards of 40%. Um, but yes, ma'am, props to the folks who taught me that, uh, that, that good mathematical model. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I know Chelsea or Dr. Young was sending that to me, so I, cause I didn't have time to actually write it, but I would just like to just say, um, to you, Dr. Matney, that, um, we surely do appreciate you. We know that you are coming in as a new principal, but not new to the work that you have done in the past. And we're looking for great things, um, to come out in, in, uh, in the school that you oversee, because I truly believe that you have, according to what you presented to us, you guys have, you have some good things that you can work towards to move the school. I know you said your goal was a B, um, and I was just wondering why your goal wasn't an A, but if we get a B, I think that's great. So at least thank a B, you so much. aspiring for that A. Um, <laughs> I love new tech, and we're going to give you our very best. Thank you so much for all that you and your team do. Thank you all. All right. I have a quick question, and this might be for you, Ms. Jennings. It, uh, Dr. Matney spoke about uh, credit recovery. 
do we have a district wide credit recovery plan or is that school by school? How does that work? We have um, some guidelines for each high school because sometimes, you know, because of the difference in um, the focus of the school, we may have to implement it slightly different, but we do have credit recovery for all schools. Okay, can we see what, what the, I don't understand the difference. Okay, for example, if it's a, um, just basically if it's a block schedule or semester schedule course versus a year long course. So you would okay. handle how you would, or when you would implement it, but it really depends okay. on, that's the only difference. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yep. Ms. Jennings, is that, and that's everybody, correct? That is everybody. And I would like to say thank you to all of the principals and their school Great improvement job. teams yes. and their staff for a job well done. Yes. And to the management team for, you know, second round. It's just wonderful to have everyone a part of this process. And to the board members, we do thank you for your time today, your feedback, your questions, because not only does it help the individual schools grow, but it helps us grow as district leaders and supports. So we just thank you for that. And as you can see, we have a lot of common threads, you know, uh, throughout each school. And we have a lot of goals that we'd like to accomplish, but it's continuous. And we, it, school improvement is about meeting students where they are, you know, and the parents and the families, you know, just taking them from where they are and moving them forward. Um, we do thank you. Um, I will turn it over to Dr. Young now. We are hoping to recommend that you approve our schools and their school improvement plans. Thank you. Yeah. I'll turn this over to Chair Lady Tally Brain. Thank you, Dr. Young. And I just want to just say to um, your team, Dr. Young, um, Ms. Jennings, um, Mr. Stewart, um, Ms. Pulliam, I believe is your executive team. Am I missing someone? And Dr. Whitaker. And Dr. Whitaker, that's right. And Dr. Yes. Whitaker, I, I just want to say to your team, along with you, Dr. Young, I, I appreciate all the hard work that you guys are doing. I know that you guys are working really hard through these unforeseen times. And sometimes it may go unnoticed that we don't say thank you or we don't say we appreciate you. We know that you guys are working more harder now than you've ever worked before. So I say to you, Dr. Young and your team, we the board truly do appreciate all that you and your principals and your teachers and all of you guys are doing Jan down to the janitors and cafeteria workers. We know that the district are, is really going above and beyond. And so I say kudos to everybody. Thank I you. would like, I would like to just say to the principals, um, I know how difficult this task was for you. I know you probably have had anxiety all week, if not all month long, until you got this off of your tech, your plate. We're getting this stuff done. And each and every one of you brought your own charisma to your presentations. And I have to say, from last year to this year, I thought it was great. I really did. I hope my colleagues agree with me. Because I personally thought you brought your own pizzazz, your own charisma, your own personalities into the atmosphere. So I, I, I just commend you. And I know it's a lot, but I just want to just say individually, um, Ms. Dunbar, who, I, who is our principal of the year, Ms. Monzel, Ms. Brewer, um, I want to say to Mr. Dr. Carrington, Mr. Green, um, Dr. Matney, uh, I want to say Dr. Jerkins, or maybe I'm speaking it in existence for you, Shanae, Ms. Jenkins. Go ahead Jerkins. and speak it. Go ahead and speak it. <laughs> I, I want to just say, I think I called everybody's name out. I want to just say thank you to all of you guys on behalf of the board. You guys, in, in my opinion, and I think I speak on behalf of the board, are a A team. You are A plus team and I do appreciate. So with that being said, I know we have tarried long enough. Um, we're calling for a motion if there's no more discussion for my um, colleagues. We're calling for a motion for us to be able to 
except the school improvement plans that Ms. Jennings um, and her team presented? I would like to motion that we accept the school improvement plans presented by the principals and uh, Ms. Jennings staff. A second. Thank you. The motion has been made by Ms. Long and second by Ms. Sims. May we vote by board members by raising our hands, please? And all of us are in favor. So the motion is carried. Let's give it up for the, the principals. If I could just say real quickly before I turn it back over to you, Dr. Young, and I know I got to do my announcements, but I just wanted to just say real quickly um, to, to you guys, couple of takeaways for me, and I'll talk a little bit about this um, with the other board members, but I took a lot of notes and a um, couple of takeaways um, for, from us to you. Um, the word equity just gleamed a little bit as you guys presented, and I want you guys to keep that in mind. The word equity, I want you guys, these are takeaways or recommendations to just look at, always look at whether or not we're being equitable across the board. Secondly, um, climate and culture. Please ensure you know that we look at our climate and culture and provide thoroughly great customer service. I think the customer service piece, and I know Dr. Young talks to you guys a lot about this piece because I know that's what she stands on, and I see her do that so much with her, um, with you guys, her team. So the customer service piece, I think across the board, I think we do a good job, but I think we could so much improve and, and we always can improve. So let's take a look at the customer service. So, so equity, climate and culture, customer service, let's continue to try to build the morale with, you know, all of our um, people that we work with. And then um, the takeaway or the highlight for, from me that I think from all of us can use is Miss um, Miss Shanae, you utilizes it now. Is that attendance piece? I commend her from having someone to really monitor that, put that particular person on your attendance because we all struggle in that area. So let's just think about maybe Dr. Young, if we could just look at that tool that Shanae is using, Miss Jenkins is using to um, focus on that attendance piece, and then also I think. Um, I, I hate to click gleaming, but the other piece I got from Ms. Shanae was the focus groups. It's so good to have focus groups. I yes. know we call them surveys sometimes, but focus groups can really help you get a feel of where you guys are. And the more you do focus groups in small settings, the better we are as a team and as a district. So just a few of the takeaways from me to you, from me, from us as a board to you guys as a district. So with that being said, again, we want to wish you as board members, we wish you all a happy, happy Thanksgiving from our families to your families. And I'll now go into our board announcements. Um, board members, December 1st, 2020, we will have our retreat from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that place or setting is going to be at Buck Springs um, Plantation. Um, Victoria, I would like for you, if you could, for me to pick up the key, because I will be coming a little bit, you know, if you could just pick up the key um, from Paula. And then December the 3rd, 2020, the special, we have a special call work session from 3 o'clock to 6 p.m. And that work session will be done virtually. And then, of course, we'll have our regular board meeting on December the 8th. Um, and I know it says the middle school, but I think we're going to have all of our meetings, if I'm not mistaken, virtually now, correct? At or the time, the board had not discussed December okay. 8th. And so we just need now the direction of where you all would like us to go so that we can make the changes. Well, I think, I think if I'm not, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. I think we're going to do that virtually, right, board members, for right now, or are we going to go back to the school? I thought we you have not decided because I think the two meetings that were in question had multiple presentations. And okay. So put us over the number of 10. And that's what I, thought. I don't think we made a decision given that we can meet up to 10. Okay. 
All right, so uh -huh. we'll, we'll follow up then. It's not a problem. Then we'll follow back up, and I'll just leave it as is. It's it's the at the middle school for right now, and then we can decide as a team um, moving forward. So that's all of my announcements, um, Dr. Young. I give way. Do you have anything else at this? No, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Any other board members have anything? I don't want to overlook anybody. If not, I know we have been. I just, I just want to just say one more time, um, happy Thanksgiving to you and your families. And we so appreciate each of you. Please be safe and practice those, um, those W's with, you know, washing your hands, staying away from your six feet. And, and, you know, I, 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 pers I personally believe that if we do those three W's then we can all be safe and, and have a good Thanksgiving to everyone. I now call for a meeting to adjourn. Madam Chair, I make a motion that this meeting be adjourned. Second. Burn. Uh, mo uh, motion was made by Victoria Lehman and, and second by Linda Bird. May we vote, please, by raising your hands. All in favor, the motion carried. So have a good evening, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving. All. This is a heart <laughs> for everybody. <laughs> you all have a beautiful Thanksgiving. Thank you. Bye-bye. Everybody Happy else. Have a blessed Thanksgiving.